Hey, everybody, tune in to Recent Tartarian. Recent Tartarian. Recent Tartarian. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Hey, can, can you me... hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? You sure? Great. All right, then that's not bad. Now, the thing is, that let's I'll send you a picture and then have a look at this. Okay. And then this is going to get you shocked. Yeah? Okay. We've heard these great things about the Roman Empire. Now, the Roman Empire was supposed to be in Europe, in Italy, starting from there. And they are supposed to have had the Latin language and the Latin language spread to France, Spain, Romania, Italy, and from there we've got a modern Italian. Okay, let's start from a, let's go back even 10 seconds before that, or two steps before that. You had just sent me a new book that you came out with, which was postulating, did Jesus live in Europe? Is that your newest piece that you've been doing, right, I think? Or Yes. Okay. So yeah, it's called The Last Crusade. Okay. So what's the deal with yeah. that? Yeah, it's part two of a book that's called Jesus Christ, Tartaria, Jesus Christ, and Tartaria, The Last Crusade. Wow. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Let's get straight to the point so that then who will see this will know this is really serious stuff because the Roman Empire is like the heart of the history that we know. Yes, it goes back 2,000, 3,000 years. Now, have a look at this and check this out. Yeah? I've just sent you Wikipedia and uh, people can check it themselves. In 80, around 1860 or 1850, only 2% of the people in Italy spoke Italian. Have you got hold of that? I'm seeing this. And I can corroborate even just going to Italy, because in parts of northern Italy, they still don't speak Italian. They speak German. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the thing is that many people, their grandparents are still alive. They can ask them. And their grandparents will say, my grandparents didn't speak Italian at all. So now we're, So now we've got a serious problem here. Yeah, because they're telling us that the Italian Bible was published in the 16th, 17th century. And for the next two, three hundred years, people were reading the Bible in Italian. But so who... Nobody spoke. Is, yes. it no, is it nobody who spoke, or who spoke Italian? Is it some small um, the part of Italy? The 2% the, the who spoke it, I'll give you an example now, are the people who are in government and who went to the government schools. Like, for example, in America, you've got the CIA training schools. Yes? <laughs> yeah. So it's it's actually less than 2%. You, have you got all of the pictures? So now we've got a problem now. What about the Bible in Italian? It's been around since the 16th, 17th century, and now uh, nobody could read this. And now what's even worse, yeah, you can go throughout Europe, they're going to say the Renaissance started in Italy. Now, look at the picture I've just sent you. This is from a library called the Girolamini Library or Girolamini Library in Italy. And you can see thousands of books there. Yeah, the, in fact, they tell you that millions of books were printed throughout the Renaissance and after that in the next two, three centuries. Yes. So who were you, they printing these books for if nobody could speak Italian? You've got this picture of Pius here. Is it suggesting that they created this language at this in the 1600s, or what's the idea? Now, now the thing is, before creating, I'm going to give you an example now. Okay. Imagine right now, I come to the United States, and I'm printing, and I not now. Imagine if I tell everybody that I'm in England for the last few centuries, people spoke a language here called the Antarctic language. And then I say there was a renaissance and millions of books were made in the Antarctic language and Bibles were written in the, and the Vatican's over here and it's in the Antarctic language in England. And then you suddenly find out nobody could speak this language until the last 50, 100 years. Then it means that history is a lie. That's the problem we've got. So it's interesting also because we studied recently Etruscan and found this, there's new neural net math programs that are trying to take apart the symbols and figure out for the first time in centuries what Etruscan really sounded like. And there's a suggestion it sounds like Latin backwards and that Latin itself might be like a and mirror. What is person. Latin backwards? We'll go through that in a minute. Now that is very important. What is Latin backwards? Yes. Um, the thing is, I went through many manuscripts of Latin backwards. Now, for example, they turn around and say, that the output of the printing press was 20 million volumes and was going up 
in the 16th century to between 150 to 200 million copies. Renaissance printing. But now we've got nobody speaks Italian. So we're talking about the Renaissance 15th, 16th century here. So that's the first. Now let's go, let's dig a bit even deeper. Now I'm sending you uh, more information, people can check this. In the year 1800, around the year 1800, only 10% of the people could speak French in France. Only 10%. What did they speak in France? Now the thing is, <laughs> so, the, the, so when you ask them what did they speak, they're just going to give you a bogus history and saying they were speaking, they were speaking that, blah, blah, blah. So now the problem we've got is what about these French books that they were printing? For example, uh, there is the Olivetan Bible, not the Olivetan Bible, the French Bible. I'm not sure when it was first made in the 15th or 14th century. Yeah, and things like that. Yeah, so we've got a problem. We've got no, nobody speaking French. They say 10%, yeah, but those 10% spoke it reasonably. It's like, il dit uh, 10% comme ça, il parle français, mais c'est pas beaucoup, c'est un peu. <laughs> so I know what is reasonable French. So when the and so officially, ten percent of the people spoke it reasonably, and ninety percent did speak it. They just knew a few basic words, and because the French language was related to some of the other local languages, but fifty percent of the people basically couldn't speak any French at all. Blah blah blah. So we've got a problem. And they say maximum 15% spoke it, but they were like the state agents and people who were going to the church control school. So we've got these serious problems now. What about all these Renaissance thousands and thousands of books that you're going to go to in Paris? You'll go to the museums and the National Library, Bibliothèque Nationale or whatever they call it. So who are they printing these books for? Ghosts? Or, and the amount of books they've got, are they all forgeries? Is that a problem now? now if they so if they didn't speak French in France, and French is a Latin Latin language, and they didn't speak Italian in Italy, and that's a Latin language, the two main centres of the Roman Empire, then what about the Roman Empire? So the rat. What the about the Latin language? It's the 1600s. So we've got Chinese printing presses, and we have examples of other copies before the Gutenberg printing press. Are they just? Is this? Are we the saying... Chinese printing press is a totally different story. Yeah, let's focus on your. Let's go back to that question that you asked me about Latin backwards. What did you say? Yeah, is it Etruscan? Because the, the Etruscan language Etru it looks like yes. it's backwards. Etru so now the thing is, now the thing is, I will send you. Have you received the pictures that I've already sent? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen them? Yeah. yeah. So now I'll give you an example of what Latin looks like backwards. Yes. Now the thing is, I, I started having a look, and Latin backwards was even used in Argentina in the early 20th century and throughout um, Latin America and many places in Europe until when people went to school. Do you know that most people didn't speak French, for example, or Italian until they went to school in the in, after the 20th century? Yes. So they didn't even speak it. So now I'll give you an example. You can compare this yourself of Latin backwards. I'll give you an example of a postcard that's from Latin America. Yes, Latin America in the early, early 20th century. So they had to write normal Latin, like we write English and French and Spanish today. They had to write that for the postal service, the official postal service in South America. Yes, but on the, on the actual postcard itself, they wrote Latin backwards. Yeah, it's because that's how the normal people wrote it in Europe. Yes, until the people in power changed everything. And then when they changed everything, it changed. Let me just look for an example of postcards. This is just a normal postcard by a normal person. So it's not um, a manuscript that's written by the official churches or by people who are working for the state. Yeah. So when you have a look at this, if they actually saw how um, ordinary people were doing their writing. Well, it, it's Latin. interesting that it connects so much to Leonardo da Vinci writing backwards, supposedly. They had this whole idea that he had secret notes because he was writing backwards. But if it's not backwards, and it's just the way the language was written and spoken before the Latinization, that's a very interesting yes, idea. Yes, before the Latinization. So now, what is this language that's before the Latinization? I know what the answer is, but if I say it, then nobody's going to believe me. Now, I'm here, I'm going to send you an example how we write today yes and th this is latin forwards how we write today 
um, you should have received a copy of it. Just um, normal handwriting. Before these internet days came, people had to write their assignments, their essays with their handwriting. Now let me look for um, for um, Latin backwards. It's a crazy time also because if Leonardo da Vinci is 1452 to 1519, supposedly, even who's to say what's right, but that fits over this period that they're, call they're calling the 1492 and the end of the... Cordoba Caliphate, the end of Arabic Spain, Italy's influences by... Yeah, Arabic and Jewish Spain. Right. Yeah, many people forget when they say Arabic, yeah, the Jewish people there spoke are really looking for that letter because our handwriting from that example, from that time. Jesuits, China. I've got down to the... So I was yeah. looking and you've got mental floss talking about in 1790, a study showed that only 10% of the population of France spoke French. And this map was made in 1847 before France, French had become a tr the whole language of France. The yeah. OE languages are outlined in pink. And so there's a number of different languages available that they're trying to point to. The Basque regions, for instance. The Basque yeah. state is very interesting. Um, the Basque province, yeah, that's what you could say, uh, the Catalonia, things like this, and it's in the north anyway. I really cannot believe this, because everybody in the world, how people were sending their own letters and everything before they went to the official schools. Because do you know what they say? A lot of these documents got burnt out in the wars, during the wars. This is actually shocking. This is somewhere from South America. It's being, I think it's being posted to Europe or there's many things like this. And they turn around and say that most of the documents that were similar from the 18th, 19th century were destroyed during World Wars One and two, blah, blah, blah. Now, when you look at this postcard, you will notice that when they're writing the address, they're writing Latin forwards. Mm. Now, when they're actually writing the letter, they're write, writing the letter Latin backwards. Tardia, now, when you tardeta. write Latin backwards, guess what it is mysteriously? It's ex it looks exactly the same like Arabic. Most people don't know this. Now, the shocking thing is, unfortunately, many people won't want to hear it. It's because we've grown up in a society where we've been brought up so that we just can't stand anything to do with Arabs, Middle East, blah, blah, blah. But the thing, Latin backwards is basically Arabic. Wow, that's so crazy. This is amazing. So first off, it says postal card in Spanish, which I would have not remembered to think is tarjeta. So it's tar. And then it's amazing to see the style of cursive Latin looking Roman English, yeah, but still the Latin yeah, language. Yeah, do you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, oh, it's an Arabic dialect. Oh, it's called Ladino, blah, blah, blah. Or it's called this Sephardi or whatever. But everybody knows that that was being used in Spain and Latin America. <clears throat> I'm going to try to see if Arabic. I can... I'm going to try to flip the yeah. image here on my side and see what it looks like. To it's be... simply Arabic. Yeah, I can guarantee that. Wow. Yes, I, I've had a look at the alphabet myself and other things. And, and just to confirm it and what to make it even worse, yeah, what I couldn't believe yeah, is this. Now, let me show you some more details, which is very scary. Yes. Now, this is going to totally scare you. Yes. The, the thing is that we're talking about now, let's speak about the Jewish people. 100, 200 years ago, they were called the children of Israel. The Jewish people, it, when somebody says the Jewish people, there was 12 tribes, which is known. So if somebody says European people, ah, this means Russians. No, Europe's got Germans as well, French, Dutch people, English people, Italian, Greek. Yes, the children of Israel have got many tribes. Now have a look at this. I've just sent you this. Now, Spain, especially Spain, and uh, most of the Jews in the world, more than 90% of the Jews, Yes, until the 20th century, spoke Arabic all over the world. I've just given you an example. Right. Yeah. Have and you then, received it? I'm seeing Medieval it. Medieval Jews spoke Arabic. They were writing in Arabic. It was basically, their language was Arabic. I'm seeing the Muse, JHU, Education, all these different educational sites, Smithsonian Associates. Yeah, there's so many. Yeah, I'll send you the New York Times then. I'll send you more. Well cited, if, yes. If people, yeah, if people are not satisfied, here's from, from California, New York Times. But from hopefully also Sephardi. people could just know because you look into Spain, Maimonides in America with Maimonides University in New York, named after the Spanish Jewish okay. philosopher and doctor who ran the court okay, of Caliphate in Spain. now we've got Spain, a problem so. because if the Jewish people are speaking, you know, Arabic, the local yes, for at least one and a half to 2,000 years, 
if Jesus Christ lived a thousand years ago or two thousand years ago and he came for his brothers, what language were his brothers speaking? Ah, so a lot of them Arabic. were speaking Arabic. There's also these... no ninety percent, more than ninety percent, the majority. But how different? So we make these subtle differences between Aramaic and Arabic. They try ah, to say it's okay. such a different thing. Okay, before right? we go on to Aramaic, yeah. Okay, I'll go through Aramaic now very quickly, then you will practically get the message. Okay. Yes, because people don't know what Aramaic is. When you turn around and say, you know what, if you turn around and say, what's his name? Who's that rap star? It's Snoop Doggy Dog. What <laughs> language does he speak? Someone's going to say it's called rap language. It's English. Simple <laughs> as. It's a dialect. Texas. It's English. Simple as. New York, Brooklyn, the boys, how they speaking. It's English. So now what is Aramaic? Yeah, I've sent it you. This is from the Times of, and it's from JSTOR, University websites, everything. And here it tells you during the Middle Ages. Yes, the Middle Ages started after the birth of Christ. Yes, 90% of the Jews spoke Arabic all over the world. Huh. Yes, and yeah. what is Aramaic? Aramaic is not even one language. It's 150 dialects. And not a single one of the Aramaic dialects Yes, sounds like any of the writing that's inside the Talmud mm -hmm. or even words that Jesus Christ spoke in any of the Gospels. Interesting. So that cancels Aramaic straight away. So they're yeah, just trying to avoid, it's, they're avoiding the elephant in the room. Because clearly, if you think about it, we know that the Arabs were all over Europe. They were controlling their, it was the language that was spoken. We're seeing examples that the Jews in Spain were speaking Arabic. So the lingua franca in France and in Spain and in Italy you're saying this was Arabic. That makes perfect sense. That's crazy that it's so well, hidden. I'll give you an example now. If the Jews have been speaking, or the children of Israel are speaking Arabic for the last 2,000 hey, years, French that's Christians what you can find, then what language was Jesus Christ speaking? He came for his people. <laughs> Please don't say he was speaking Russian or I do, Chinese. I do want to understand what Arabic is better, because I know that the script has changed. There's different ways it's spoken in different places. Oh, no, no, uh, no, when somebody says script, I'll give you an example. It's handwriting. So historians play games when they say handwriting. Just because we use Microsoft Word and Times New Roman or something, yeah, people have different handwritings. I myself can do five, five or ten different handwriting. So now this is. So now we've got a problem. So if the Jewish people are speaking Arabic for an estimated two thousand years, what language was Jesus Christ speaking? How close is the Arabic from? What language would the What language would the Jewish Bible be in? How what language should the Old Testament be in if the Jewish people were speaking Arabic? If you go on Wikipedia, like Arabic, it'll say in the first sentence is a Semitic language. Okay, so is that how different is right. Arabic today? Do you know when from somebody's going to say ago? the word Semitic? It seemed like saying, ah, English is a European language. Greek is a European <laughs> language. It goes on forever. Etruscan is a European well, so, language. But how, how Those different? things confuse people. So how different yeah. is Arabic yeah, from... Yeah, how much has Arabic changed in a thousand things years? Today. When somebody says Arabic has changed, the thing is, that, do you know what? Unfortunately, yes, we can't find these documents to show that Arabic hmm. has changed. I'll show you this in a minute, and this <laughs> is going to shock you. Okay. Now, have a look at this. What I'm going to show you today is going to totally shock you. Now, this is from Wikipedia and many other places. You can check this out. The language Hebrew was not spoken at all until the 20th century. The 20th century means that only in the 1950s and 60s you could find people who spoke Hebrew fluently. The language basically did not exist. And it's now, been created, another thing is you can like. see here, and what I've sent you here, I've just sent you now, is that Hebrew was not spoken at all for the last 2,000 years. Elijah now, ben Yehuda had Hebrew, to invent new words for modern Hebrew. Yeah, it's talking about a lot of the inventions yeah, of right. new words for it. Yeah. Now, I'm going to make this easy for you because people don't understand what invent means. Arabic and Hebrew today have an estimated 60% the same words. And yes, grammar, the right? first Hebrew dictionary was written after 1880 by a man named Ben Yehuda, and he was from Lithuania. Now, what did he do? <laughs> he invented a lot of new words. So that's why there's 40% difference. Now, let's see what Ben Yehuda said himself. The man who, who, wrote, who invented the modern Hebrew language, he wrote the Hebrew dictionary. And let's see what he said. I've sent you a link here now. This is from, from Wikipedia and from Haaretz, a major national newspaper wow, in Israel. Wow, this and is then, crazy. Okay. Now, but wait till you hear what he said. Now, Ben Yehuda, he's the creator and the inventor of the modern Hebrew language. He was a humanist. People can check what humanists are. Now, this is what he said. He said that the roots are the heart of the Arabic language, 
were originally part of the Hebrew language. He said that these Arabic roots were mysteriously lost. Oh, how could they be lost if the Jews were speaking Arabic anyway? And then he said they were found again when he wrote the dictionary. And wow. he found the roots of the Hebrew language within the Arabic language. Mm -hmm. Then they invented modern Hebrew. But let me, get, let me go through this because this is really serious. And then he turned around and says, to create modern Hebrew language, he was able to do this by turning to the Arabic language. He said he did this because he followed the example of our, quote, ancient scholars. Who the hell are these ancient scholars? He right. said the ancient scholars, when they created Hebrew, they did it with Arabic. So he's even saying himself that Hebrew was originally created from Arabic. Yeah, and then he is... says he's following their example, and he's doing the same thing. And Hebrew was not a spoken language, even then it was spoken for the last 2,000 years by Jewish people. So, you know, Arabic was spoken by the Jewish people. But Let's give the audience a language. second to, to read it. This is crazy. These are great quotes. So I'm yeah. seeing here. So now what uh, he says. The Arabic roots of our. Well, I just want to right. get it quoted for people. The, this is amazing. So this is the guy who is no, publicly you, accepted um, for you writing quote, Hebrew. Let me finish the full sentences. Okay. Because I've just given you the screenshot from Google. Mm. I've actually opened up Haaretz. So now, Eliza ben Yehuda and other researchers, yeah, they turned around and said that in the Hebrew Bible and in the Mishnah and in the Talmud, these religious books of modern Judaism, he said that these words, are, uh, most of them have got Arabic roots, hundreds of Arabic roots, basically they're Arabic words. And he said to understand the Hebrew in the Old Testament it was, and the Talmud and the Mishnah, it was easy to understand it through the Arabic language. In simple words, he said the Arabic language made it easy to invent the modern Hebrew language. And many words found in the Bible, the Mishnah and the Talmud were actually Arabic. Yeah, okay. And the Arabic was the language that Jews are speaking. This is, so what, now we've this got... is, this is what it says, though. I want to give you, because this is, want, this is yeah. irrefutable, and there's no one who can deny this. He's, it's Eliza ben Yehuda, the guy who's known for inventing modern Hebrew, publicly and acclaimed by Israel. He says, the embryo of its Semitic sister, Arabic, shared the lesson in coexistence. Ah, yes. The root of our, the Arabic roots are, quote, ours. They're our roots. So the roots of Arabic were once part of the Hebrew language, lost, now we have found them again. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's amazing stuff. Yeah, he said, can you imagine right now if I create a new language and I call it the language of the planet Pluto or, and I turn around and say, hey, the planet Pluto has lost its language for the last 2,000 years. 60% English. But, um, I've, myster <laughs> I've mysteriously found the language of the planet Pluto inside the English language. I like and, your um, Snoop Dogg version, it. actually. I think that's pretty good. Snoop Dogg taking a language, 60% of it's pretty much English. That's about right. Whole new language. Yes. So now <laughs> what, um, Now I'll send you a photograph of Eliza Ben Yahuda And on his desk, he's got uh, Arabic books. And he's, uh, he's just copying the words, changing the pronunciation. What the heck? And um, just using a new alphabet. This is literally yeah, a photo of him fun. doing it. That's crazy. And this is some so Ben Yehuda is from Lithuania. And do we know, was he inspiring? The, where's the other 40% coming from in Arabic? But, but now we've got a serious problem. Because the thing is, if the Jews were speaking Arabic for, the, for 2,000 years, why is the Bible written in Hebrew? Yes. Because imagine if the English are speaking English, then why, is, why would English history be written in Chinese? So are the Dead Sea Scrolls written in Arabic, or what's, what do we got? No, so they're saying that I'm talking about the Hebrew Bible. Let's focus yeah. on one thing. Okay. So imagine if you're Jewish for 2,000 years, yeah? You're speaking Arabic, you're writing all your books in Arabic, yeah? Yeah. And of course, your Torah is going to be in which language? I saw, and I saw some of this examples of the Torah being in, in Ar yes. Arabic Torahs all across Spain. It, it, it will be in Arabic. The earliest so Torahs they have are in Arabic. That's what I was finding. Yes, so now, so if they're going to be in Arabic, so now we've got a serious problem. Yes, what are all these Hebrew books doing there? Do you really think that the Hebrew Bibles were actually used by the Jews for 2,000 years if they couldn't even speak this Hebrew language? And the Hebrew words are actually, in the Bible, are actually Arabic words? And now we've got another problem. During the Inquisitions, the Inquisitions were in Holland, in Germany, everywhere, 16th, 17th, 18th century, things like this, Spain. Yes. Do you know what they did? They burnt all the Jewish books, and the Jewish books right. were all written in Arabic. And so they burnt so all the Arabic books that, too, then. Yeah, I've just sent it to you right now. You can have a look from education website, Smithsonian, history.com. No the burning the of Jews, the books in 1480. Yeah. yeah, their books were in Arabic, and their books were burnt. God. So now we. So this means the original Hebrew Bibles 
were in Arabic and they were burnt. And then the people who burnt them was the Vatican. And the Vatican replaced it, yes, with Hebrew. And what is Hebrew? It's just a mixture of Arabic words. So the Old Testament is actually Hebrew. And now let me show you what's even worse. There's so much information. It's actually so crazy. It's, the thing is, but the thing is to actually present it to people, for people to see it, yeah, it would have been difficult. But right. today, <clears throat> I'm actually prepared. Yeah. So the thing is, we can divert to other subjects, but instead of diverting, it's, this is like a gold mine. It's, it's, gonna, it's gonna wake people up because people are just sat there and they're dreaming and imagining things, thinking, hey, this is from God or that's from God. So now all these Jewish books, religious books are being burnt and they're re being replaced with modern Hebrew Bibles after the 15th century, 16th century. And believe it or not, that's when these Hebrew Bibles and Mishnahs and Talmuds were mysteriously published. And the Jews couldn't even speak this Hebrew language until the 20th century. The, the majority spoke Arabic until the 18th century. A few spoke Yiddish here and there under the dialects. So now the thing is, Hebrew has mysteriously got all these Arabic words. But then they changed these Arabic words and gave them new meanings and everything changed the meanings. So now they've changed the meanings, so that's even worse. So now another thing is here is you can have a look what the actual Bible is. Most people don't know. Now the Bible Actually, most of the words, whoever wrote the Bible, yes, actually wrote down all these Arabic words. Same like Eliza ben Yehuda, who wrote a dictionary to compile the entire Hebrew language for that time, when they were creating the modern Hebrew language. So he basically went through almost all the words in the Hebrew Bible and the Mishnah and the Torah, him and his committee. Yes, they went through all the words and they said these words are Arabic. But now the worst thing is, Anybody who reads that, yeah, who's an expert in Arabic, will say this. Whoever wrote this wrote it as if they had very bad knowledge of Arabic. That basically somebody you could say from China or Japan or South Korea who studied English for a year and then they're trying to write r write the Bible in Korean, translating it, wow. or trying to do something like that. So now we've got a problem. The thing is, yeah, it's like Japan. This, this Bible cannot be the book of the Jewish people. All your Bibles belong also, to us. Yeah. But now we've got a problem. If the Jewish people were speaking Arabic, yeah, Jesus Christ must have spoken Arabic. This is such a serious thing that many people have not considered. We now, to you think that's all? <laughs> okay, I thought that was all. So now imagine if there was a guy called Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ really existed and if he was Jewish. Or Yeshua, yes, and whatever we call him. And if he did speak Arabic, and if there was this kingdom of God, many people are saying there was a kingdom of God for a thousand years. And if the European people followed Jesus Christ, and if Jesus Christ spoke Arabic, then do you know what we will find? This means that we should find Arabic writing all over Europe, everywhere. Okay, let's have a look. Now, the most common thing, the first thing that everybody's going to imagine or look for is, I'll ask you a simple question. Let's see what you, how you will respond. If I am looking for Japanese coins, I'll give you three countries. Tell me which country I will find the most Japanese coins today. Am I going to find them in Zimbabwe, Argentina, or in Japan? Maybe Japan. Where we... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's obvious. If okay, I'm but looking for... if you were looking for the most this dollars aren't in the United States, right? Yeah. Before we change subjects, yeah, because we could get diverted. We normally do. Yeah. <laughs> imagine if we. Imagine right now if I'm looking for what do you call it? Let's say English pounds. Am I going to find? Where will I find the most English pounds? Eighty percent, let's say. Am I going to find them in Venezuela? Or am I going to find them in Malaysia or in England? So the reason why that's complicated to say just it's in England is that outside of the country, people are yeah, using it as a stable currency. They're using People use it outside of the country as a stable currency. So it can't... Right. It, it, no, I said 80%. Okay. I'm saying where will you find 80%? Okay. Like digitally and stuff? Yes. Probably domestically. I'll give you that. Okay. Yes. Where, where is domestic? In, is it in, in, in the country? It's for, if it, if the pound is from England, then it'll be probably around England. Yeah, in England. You, it, this is where you will normally find it. Yeah. So now let's have a look at this. Now this is really shocking. Yes. Now the thing is, if you're looking for Arabic coins throughout history for the last two thousand years, yeah, you're going to find where they found the majority of the coins. I've just sent it you examples. Yes, you're going to find that 80% of the Arabic coins have been found in Europe, not in the Middle East, not in India, not in Africa, not in Uzbekistan. And then when you and then when you find these coins, do you know what they tell you? 
they tell you that these coins came from Uzbekistan near Afghanistan. For example, I've just sent you the link that I've just sent you. It says 125 million wow. dirhams, Arabic coins, were imported into Northern Europe just in the 10th century. Can you believe this? They're telling us that Europe basically imported all its currency. Some of it is basically Uzbekistan, Afghanistan. And they're telling us from Afghanistan and Uzbekistan, strange places, they're just telling us some ridiculous history. Same like they're saying, how did these Jewish people start speaking Arabic in Europe? They were speaking Arabic for one and a half thousand years. Do you know what the history they tell you? Oh, these guys came on their camels from Saudi Arabia all the way to Europe. Yes, and then they converted and brainwashed all the Jewish people to mysteriously speak Arabic. Now, I'm sending you an investigative study from Oxford University, and you, people can check this investigative study. It's very suspicious. So now, one, there's a, historians have got no answer. That the biggest currency in Europe, all over, France, England, Poland, Germany, Sweden, Norway, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, Austria, Greece, Bulgaria, you're just going to find Arabic coins. And then, you know what? Um, so they turn around and say, hey, they were importing these coins. Now, on Oxford University, there's, there's a study. And do you know what they say? For example, they found a million silver currency, yes, in Northern Europe. And do you know what they're saying? Yeah, these coins mysteriously came from Iraq, the deserts of Iraq or somewhere. And they mysteriously ended up in the Baltics and in England and places like that. And then they're saying, oh, they ended up here because the people in places like Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, Iraq, Kuwait were buying... European slaves or Germans, they were just buying Germans. They were, they were sending all this gold and silver coins. All these coins that mysteriously say there is no God except Allah. Almost like the Europeans don't have none of their currency. And it's like the ridiculous story that they're saying. And then the thing is, they turn around and say the Germans were barbarians, the Vikings were barbarians. And then they turn around and say these people were barbarians, uneducated. They didn't, couldn't have their own currencies. So they said this is why these people... They were just using the Arabic coins from the other side of the world, which sounds ridiculous. Yes, and these coins, it's not like today's coins, they're actual gold and actual silver. And so they're telling us that these people in the Middle East, not even there, even worse, in Uzbekistan and uh, places like that, were so rich they were exporting m hundreds of millions of coins of gold and silver coins just to Europe. And the Europeans don't have their currency in many of these places. Can you believe wow. this? Then, uh, so now we've got a problem. So when we look at that, do you know the Jews are speaking Arabic? But nobody wants to answer this. It's, if the Americans are speaking English, yeah, then Donald Trump obviously didn't speak Chinese. Yeah, if Jesus Christ came for the Jewish people and the Jewish people are speaking Arabic, what will we find? Jesus Christ would have spoken Arabic. So if he was so big and then his religious system was spread throughout Europe, original Christianity, then this means the coinage, the currency, would also be in Arabic in Europe. Right. Yes. I'm so finding now, an article right now from the Smithsonian saying that they have proof of Scandinavians minting coins with Arabic, there is no God but Allah on it, in Northern Europe. And their excuses are saying it's a counterfeit, like they were just trying to make it look like Arabic coins, because that was the thing to do. Oh, it's a pretty bad excuse. You, can you imagine right now, going in to these villages in the 10th century yes and these are viking barbarians with all this gold and silver it's the scam and then you'll find all these coins from the middle ages with the star of david i've just sent you the star of david with arabic wow, on them and you'll find this. Yeah, yeah have a look at what these are, are arabic coins are and we all know the fighting between israel and the palestinians and the star of david absolutely well, uh, here i've just sent you the star of david you'll find all these coins throughout the middle ages and they've all got arabic writing on and they're, and they're supposed to be Jewish coins or Muslim coins. And it do, just doesn't make sense. There's yeah. no Hebrew on these coins. So when we ha And then one of the greatest masterpieces, yeah? So if the Jews were speaking Arabic, then this means King David, did he speak Latin or did he speak Hebrew? <laughs> so now Arabic, the worst thing right. is... Okay, so now the worst thing is, I thought I'll have a look at this. This is a statue of King David. It's one of the biggest masterpieces. It's in the Museum Nacional del, del what's it called, Bargain Florence, Florencia in Italy. And I've sent you a statue. It's actually one of the greatest masterpieces in history. And do you know what the strangest thing is? This statue of King David, one of the greatest masterpieces in the world, 
yeah, has mysteriously got Arabic writing on it. No. And it's where? from the Middle Ages. What the I've heck? I've just sent it you. Yes, and these stars of David's from the Middle Ages, they've got Arabic writings on them. Where's the on, Arabic on the writing on the David? I don't see the Arabic yet. Uh, I've just sent it you. In, I've sent you the latest oh, picture. Oh, my me. God. This is not on the shield plating, like the Vikings yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. with the Arabic writing. So, oh so my now God. Um, the thing is, now many people are not aware of it. Let's have a look at the Renaissance time. After, uh, after they started expelling Jews and Arabs and Muslims, and they were killing them and burning them in inquisitions and blah, blah, blah. Yes, before that, we've got some of the greatest, one of the greatest masterpieces of the Middle Ages and the Renaissance is the painting I've just sent you. And they say it's by Gentile de Fabriano. Yes, and he, he's from 1423. So they will say he spoke Italian. We can't find these Italian languages. Yeah, it's just a fraud. Yes, and this, is, uh, this picture is called The Adoration of the Magi or The Birth of Jesus Christ. It's one of the greatest masterpieces in history. People can check it. Wow. And do you know what the worst thing is? Yeah? Check these, some of these great masterpieces, yeah? They've got Arabic written on it. So oh, now man. we've got a problem. If hey, it's got oh, Arabic in, on the, it, yeah? in the halo? Oh, man. Yes. And there's yes. a halo so, with so Arabic now, on... Oh, and then, so, so is this so now, Mary and Joseph with Arabic halos? Are they suggesting that they're Arabs? And there's dudes no, with turbans. No, there's no, turbans no, that, in this. Is, it's not about Arabs. It's like this. You can be Chinese but speak American. So now the thing is, Arabic was the global language. So now a serious question is, if the Jews are speaking Arabic, and if Jesus, if the Virgin Mary was a Jew, what language did she speak? She must have spoken what 90% of the Jews were speaking. Well, is that, so is that their native language, or is it the melting pot language, right? So it, now the thing, now the thing is, when we speak English, we will say Arabic, yes. But let's pretend we're Middle Eastern people, and I think they say something like, "I've learned a bit of Arabic." If so, they will ask somebody, "Do you speak Arabic?" They'll say, "Kalamia uh, uh, Arabia." Uh, the, it sounds like Rabi. Yeah, do you speak the Arabi or Rabi language? And that's why the word is called Rabbi means somebody who's educated. Yes? Rabbi means somebody who's educated who could read and write. There and the go. language of the Rabbi is Arabi. It makes yes. Sense. And another thing people don't understand. Yeah? Muhammad, Jesus Christ, and Moses were cousins. They were from the same family. So if they're from the same family and the Jews are speaking Arabic for thousands of years, what else can we say? Okay, now if you if Europe was if they followed Jesus Christ and if Jesus Christ was, a, if he spoke Arabic, Arabic, let's try and find the original Christians. Like you mentioned the Basque province before, and Catalonia, and the Cathars, Catalonia, Cathars, southern France, people speak about it, chat, things like that. The Cathars got killed, the Knights Templar got killed, etc. So now the Cathars were based around Toulouse city. So now I'm sending you a picture of the bishop. Of Toulouse there's, is, a, there was a glitch, um, there's a glitch there. Can you repeat that? The Bishop of Toulouse, Toulouse city, is where the Cathars were based. Yes, Cathars and the Knights Templar were linked to them, and they got burnt and they got dealt with by the Vatican. Yes, the Vatican didn't like it because they said that they refused to follow the Vatican. But anyway, these people, I've just sent you a painting of the Bishop of Toulouse, and he's got Arabic writing on his head. It's again with that gold pressed metal look, I mean, about the halo. So. It's saying a lot. It's like they're technologically advanced. It's uh, interesting. Have you received the latest um, picture? Right, of, yeah. Of the Bishop of Toulouse? So, the song yeah, it shows the Arabic writing. Right. Yeah. Uh, so we've got all these problems. And now the, the biggest Gothic, we don't know what the history of Gothic cathedrals are. Now, the worst thing is if we look at the biggest Gothic cathedral in the world, it's known as Seville Cathedral. But now the worst thing is Seville Cathedral, when you try to find out its history, Yes, it's very suspicious. They tell you it was a mosque and it was taken over. The, the, this is all we know. So it's very suspicious. Yes, it is totally suspicious. It doesn't make sense. Why and isn't it? You, why, you, you think it's not a mosque or you say it was a mosque that was taken over? That doesn't make sense? Or? No, what I mean is it's because in these cathedrals, many of these cathedrals, they found Arabic coins and they found Arabic writing in a lot of cathedrals. It just doesn't make sense. And they found these skulls and bones from the 17th, 18th century. Now, everyone knows that the Crusades, yeah, the Crusaders were from Germany and France and from England, mainly from Germany and France. So now let's have a look at it. During the Crusades, Europe was, they say, the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman Empire, they say, Charlemagne and then Charles Martel and things like that. I've sent you a painting of to show who they are. 
You must have heard of the Holy Roman Empire. The Holy Roman now Empire the... was neither holy nor Roman nor an empire, but that's okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, most people don't have a look. Now, here is the coronation clothes of the Holy Roman Emperor. The Holy Roman Empire only dissolved in the 18th century. But around the 14th, 15th century or, or 16th century, something happened to it. But have a look at it. We've got the coronation clothes of the Holy Roman Emperor, and he's got Arabic writing on there as well. <laughs> this is great. The coins in Europe are Arabic as well. His... The books were in Arabic until the Vatican burned them. What the hell is going on? But, but they couldn't get rid of the cool cape. He wanted to wear that, so he has Arabic on his cape still. He couldn't get rid of that. That's hilarious. Um, no, it's, uh, can you imagine? Let me send you a picture of George Bush. Yeah, it's <laughs> many people I noticed ask this question. Yeah, can you imagine if you saw George Bush or Donald Trump? Yeah, wearing the Nazi uh, SWAT sticker on their arm and things like that, and they can't help it. Yeah, it's a crazy so idea to see Ar the Christians wearing yeah, the we're Arabic thing about, after the we're Crusades. About there's many. There's many Arabic words on, on the uh, clothes of the Holy Roman Emperors, of the Christian Crusader Emperors, which doesn't make sense. They're Crusaders they who hate it? the Arabs but wear Arab stuff. Why didn't okay. they write Latin? Why right. didn't they write Hebrew? Why didn't they write Greek? <sighs> so this means that the history of these languages is a lie. So now it's even worse because now after the Crusaders in the 14th, 15th century, what we've got is Venice was great, they told us after the Crusades, Venice was fighting the Muslims in the Mediterranean. So now the strange thing is, it was in Canada next door to you, Royal Ontario Museum. They've got lots of swords from the Navy of Venice. Yes, and German soldiers. The Navy of Venice had German soldiers. And what's strange is that these German soldiers wrote their names or other things, they wrote them down in Arabic, and not Italian, not Latin, not German. I've sent you an example. Okay, what well, do you think is going on here? Was this, this the Italian and German swords with Arabic lettering? 1999, about a dozen of Italian and German swords of the 13th and 14th century were exhibited in the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto, Canada. Two of them can be seen in figures three. Either. Okay. And one cannot help but noticing the Italian and German swords are decorated with Arabic lettering. Okay. So in, another example, the Germans yeah, using I, Arabic I, swords. Yeah, I've just sent you one or two, but now it gets even worse. So uh, This is crazy. It's I've hand etched. This Jewish is hand etched in the metal. Yeah, so now I've shown you Northern Europe, there's all these Arabic coins which we can't explain. They're telling this crazy story saying, oh, they were selling slaves, they were selling Germans, oh, they were doing this, oh, they were saying they were copying it, oh, it was just a decoration. We're talking no hundreds way. Of millions that of picture right there actually. looks like a soldier carved, there is no God but Allah, into their own sword before they went into battle. That's yeah. what that looks like. So now the worst thing, so now I've gone through, and Spain was a was officially Muslim and it took longer to kill the Muslims or get rid of them there. That's why we still know about that history. Yeah. So now the thing is, let's talk about Eastern Europe. What about the Russians and the Slavs, Ukraine, etc.? We've been told that these Russians or Ruski, yes, that they were Christians to followers of Jesus Christ. So now if Jesus Christ spoke Arabic and the Jews were speaking Arabic, then we're going to find lots of Arabic writing all over Russia. Now here is the helmets of an example, I'll send you one, but you can find many. An example of the helmets of the princes and the kings of Russia. What do you see there? These, this is a, of the Tsar, Ivan the Terrible, all these others, Alexander Nevsky, Alexei Roman. Do you see Arabic? The cap of Arakan, the Arabic crown of Tsar Alexei Mikhailovich. There's no okay. way that's not Arabic. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> okay, now I'm sending you the most common currency in Russia until the 17th, 18th century. Yes, this was the common currency of Russia what the during heck? the Middle Ages. Yes, it's just got Arabic on it and it says... La ilaha okay. illallah. But what's their excuse yeah, for there this? Is no do they, God except time. How do they dismiss this? If this is their, this is clearly what they're using. Uh, what's the they, deal? That, yes, it's because nobody's checking. But why? The worst thing in Europe and America, you, Andreas, you're doing all these shows. You're you're checking all these things online. People just check something. They're not going to open up the originals. Wow. Then, the world is lazy, so it's their <laughs> fault the world is a mess. And if anyone's going to say that um, the globalists are taking over the world and they're uh, going to do their antichrist system, so be it. It serves the world right. Maybe uh, the people deserve it. If they're not yeah, paying it's attention. because the people did nothing about it. They're not checking. Okay, let's go, let's go to England now and to Ireland. This is one of the oldest Carolingian. It's a Carolingian cross from the 9th century. It okay. was found in Balakotten in Ireland. And now inside that cross, 
We don't know what the sister, uh, what the symbol of the cross is. Inside, it's got Arabic writing written on it, which says "In the name of Allah." <laughs> yes. So we're going to find these things all over Europe, and it doesn't make sense. Masterpieces for statues of King David and things like that. And the worst thing is, if the Americans are speaking English, can you imagine if Donald Trump comes along and says, "Um, <laughs> Imagine if Donald Trump was doing that. Now the thing is, it's if anybody wants to dispute it, they can go and check it. They can check it again and again and again. Yes, throughout well, up until the 18th century, 90% of Jewish people. We're talking in Brazil, Mexico, India, Iran, Russia, Spain, France, Italy, Greece, Turkey, wherever. 90% of the Jewish people around the world are speaking Arabic. This as calls into the question know, also, this cross, years. is this cross then, is it an Arabic symbol using a crucifix that for some other meaning? Or do they have a different no, story? It's, 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 or no, are they the, the, the Mazarabs or something? Now, many people... Now, many people will assume that is a crucifix. So now, if we go into the crucifix, then we'll be totally changing subjects. Fair enough. The thing is, because the thing is, many people don't know that the thing is, imagine if you're, we spoke about Kufic Arabic before. So now imagine, because you've asked, I'll quickly go through a bit of basic of this, but it, it won't be good if we go past this other subject, because right. it's very important to realize what language Jesus Christ spoke, or we will never ever understand history never and we must realize hey what the hell is going on the currency of the united states is the dollar the currency of europe was arabic we've got a problem for about a thousand years so Wiki wikipedia problem. will call this the mazarabs which they say are the arabized oh, when you say oh when you say mazarets yeah we'll, we'll go on to that in a minute because okay. when people it's like for example when people say the word direct they don't realize it comes from the word mastor now the word Masor in modern Hebrew they made it from Arabic. Yes, they will say Mizraim. Yes, Mizraim or Mizr or Masor actually just means ancient Egypt. Yes, the dialect of ancient Egypt, Masor, the ancient Egypt. Yes, so that's a totally different story. We could be totally lost and distracted. Okay. So now, what I'm going to send you now is here is a picture from the around the 13, 1350s. This Arabic writing, it's Kufi. And this is from a Spain, Seville city. Now, the thing is, on there, it's, it's got some Arabic there. I've forgotten what it says. But uh, have a look at that Arabic carefully. Can you see it? Right, yeah. The digital-looking QR code like Kufic. Yes. So now in the digital format, Cubic. what many people don't know, in the Kufic format, this will surprise you. Yes, this is the symbol for Allah in the in one of the main digital formats. Have you got hold of it? And what does that look like to you? Absolutely, it's very similar. You have got the same pattern. No, no, Actually, no, similar result. Oh, no, I've you... sent you another picture at the bottom. What can you see? Oh, there's a cross in a sort of yes. W. Yes. So now the thing is, even let's say that God existed before the crucifixion. So what the the thing is, Arabic existed before. Yes even before Jesus Christ or before the Jews were speaking it. So now we've got a problem. When you see the symbol for Allah, there's three points. And now have a look at the crucifixion here. Yes, most paintings of the crucifixion, what do you see? One cross is taller. Right. Yes, and there's two of the crosses. What can you see? The it's the, the symbol the for Allah. Wow. Three, and that's where they got the idea for the Trinity. Three, three points. And now at the top, why there is a cross at the top, it looks like a cross, it's because it's not a cross, it's because that's to show the symbol of Allah in that style of writing. It was just a design. So what happened is, these people took advantage of it. Yes, the people who, who said, who wrote these Hebrew Bibles. And at first, people are going to turn around and say, Let's, what is David talking about here? I'll make this a bit simple now. Half the world, up to half the world, the media will deny it. But if you travel around the world, maybe more than half the world, do not believe the official story, what the newspapers and politicians have said about September the 11th. That's a fact. Now, maybe in the future, people will believe it. It's because they're going to school and they're just being told this is the official story. These two airplanes hit it and it was people from the deserts of the Middle East. That's what they're told. But we know that our generation that's still alive, 
more than half the world genuinely does not believe it. They don't believe it at all. So now the thing is, the official story of the crucifixion is written in the official documents of the Vatican. They are the official people. Yes. They're the official people. And they wrote their Bibles of the New Testaments in Greek. Yes. And then they wrote it in Greek. And then Jesus Christ is supposedly saying Eli Lama instead of Allah, Allah Lama. Hmm. Now, the Alpha and the Omega spell, spells the word Alpha and Omega. When you put them together, it writes the word Allah. Yes. Let me send uh, examples. Many people don't know this. Do you know about the Alpha and Omega? It writes down the word Allah. Do you know this or you don't know? I don't um, know. I'll you, send you a... show me. You mean in right, Greek? I'll, I'll the way you... the Greek looks Arabic when it's put together? I'm sending you the information to make it simple. It's more to do with the mathematics. Now, I've sent you the book of Isaiah and Revelation. It turns around and says, God is the first and the last. The first number is one. The last number is nine. Then you go back to zero. Mm. So God is number one and number nine. God is the alpha and the omega. God is the beginning and the end. So this is what I simply say. And then we've got the Roman Empire. They wrote the Alpha and the Omega. They wrote it down in two different versions. Now, in one of the... I'll go through the first version first, the main version. Here is the Alpha and the, and the Omega. And it's, it's common. People have seen this all over the world. Yeah? I've sent you a picture of it. Have you received it? The, on how the Romans did the it. The Chiros yes. with the Alpha and the Omega in the, in the Kairos. Yes. Yes. So now yeah, anybody can open up Wikipedia or anywhere and they can have a look at the standard design for the Alpha and the Omega and just compare it to the standard um, Arabic alphabet writing for the word symbol for Allah. Whoa. What do you see? There you go. It's kind of like a W looking thing and it's, uh, yeah. It's exactly the same, just different handwriting. Right. Yes. Yeah. And uh, because it says the Alpha and the Omega is God, is the symbol of God. Yes. The Romans are using it and the Muslims are using it. And the Romans, yes, and the Holy Romans, all we can find is Arabic coins. We can't even find this Italian language until 100 years ago. So it means they're telling us lies about this history. We've got serious problems there. Wow. Yes. So, and, then, uh, we've got, and they're telling us Jesus Christ spoke Hebrew or Aramaic. We can't seem to find Jewish people if they ever spoke Hebrew. And then, oh yeah, the church that's giving out the Hebrew Bibles burnt all the Arabic ones the Jews were using. It's, can you imagine I come to the United States and pretend I'm called Mr. China? I come and burn all the books and then I replace them all with my books and they are all written in Chinese. Can you imagine this? It's a crazy the thing. Their, their holy books, the Torah, <laughs> to burn their Torahs and replace them is a, it's a pretty serious thing. But So now these Old Testaments that we've got, how can we believe them? How can we believe a single right. thing that they've got? So now let me send it to you in case somebody thinks, oh, David drew that himself with his hand. They can stop any of these. There's lots of Muslims in, throughout the world. They can stop them and say, is that the symbol for Allah? And then I've just sent you a copy from Wikipedia. I've opened it up. Cursive means people's handwritings. Yes. And that people's handwritings for Allah is exactly the same. And then now I'm sending you from uh, the Church of Gala Plastidia in uh, Italy. And you'll see the Alpha and Omega is, is a common. Now, when you, now the word for Alpha and Omega, when you pronounce it, is Allah. So now when you put down the word Alpha and together, Al-Om, you get Allahom. Hmm. Allahom. And that's why in the Hebrew Bible or in the Old Testament, they say the name of God is Elah. They say it's not Allah. They pronounce it with the letter E. But we know that God is the Alpha. God is not the Alpha or the Elephant. And then that's why they say Elohim, Al and Dom. And that's why the Muslims say Allahum. Yes, they're the only people in the world who use these symbols today who are actually using that name. So the thing is, what else can you say? <laughs> I, and then when I gave you the Kufic cubic writing to show you the symbol of Allah, why it looks like a cross at the top, I've sent you a picture now, and that will explain to you and show you why it actually looks like a cross. Because somebody is going to imagine, some people may possibly imagine, that, hey, it's got something to do with the cross. No, it's actually the design for another symbol. So that's what's the Alpha symbol, and the Omega. Yeah, and this symbol was there before uh, the crucifixion. Wow. So now we can see the crucifixion, the Trinity, the three, it's all based on this symbol for Allah, or the Alpha and the Omega. So now all these people who have been, who've been cursing these people in the Middle East and are cursing them saying the word Allah, uh, all the evidence shows that these prophets of God, if they are really connected to God, they use that language. 
we, we, can't, we cannot find any evidence that Jesus Christ spoke Chinese or French or Latin or Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic. Aramaic is not even a language. We can't seem to find any of this evidence. And then if Jesus Christ was so great, yes, we found all these coins, millions of them throughout Europe. Yeah, and the millions in circulation we found, hundreds of millions f for many centuries that just say there is no God but Allah. <laughs> France, Germany, Spain, Italy, Austria, Switzerland, Croatia, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Poland, Ukraine, Lithuania, Estonia, Latvia. What are the what is everyone going to say? What about these kings of Russia? They've told us the Russians the Russians were crazy going around killing Muslims that they had their own you know Cyrillic or Cyrillic writing, but um, the evidence shows that these guys are using Arabic themselves. As if they were to take it. So there's probably there were some people that stole the stuff eventually, but it sounds okay. like whatever they stole was from but, there. <laughs> but, but, okay, uh, if we say that the crowns were stolen, yeah, historians have said uh, many different theories. Say they've even said, oh, these crowns were gifts. Oh, it was an accident. Oh, they didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. What about the uh, millions of uh, Arabic coins that say there is no God but Allah, Moscow, Petersburg, Nizhny Novgorod? Yes. Yeah, and it's okay. interesting how mathematical Maybe, it is I, on the Omega. Do you know what it's like saying? It's like me coming to the United States and saying, hey, I found all these books here. They're all in English. Yeah. Oh, no, this is not enough evidence that in America they spoke English. No, in America they spoke Chinese. And you'll say, but um, there's all these English books there. I'll say, maybe they were all present. And then, you'll, and then Andreas will say, but, but David, we've got all these m millions of coins here. Yes. Um, uh, this is more evidence. I'll say, maybe the people did decorations or it was a mistake. And then you say, um, David, and we've got, a, what do you call it? We've got all these swords here and everything else. Okay, now I'm going to show you some other things. And it's even worse. The history of Europe. It's actually even worse that they're clearly telling lies. It's, it's just so scary what they're telling us because there's just too much evidence that uh, there's something wrong. Yes. Now I sent you, I said, let's go to the Russia's two main museums where they've got thousands of coins, swords, thousands of things. Yes. Relics for, the, for their history, for their country. Yes. Let's look at the Kremlin Museum and the Alexandrovskaya uh, Museum. Yes, and the Kolom Menskoye complex. Now, this is from the words of Professor Anatoly Fomenko, who is from Moscow State University, the number one university in Russia. And do you know what he's quoted here? He said, in the museum, we can't find anything that doesn't seem to have Arabic writing. All these uh, Middle Ages, medieval swords, everything, basically everything has got Arabic writing, nothing with um, Latin, Greek, Hebrew, Slavic, nothing. Hmm. Come on, Andrea. So, could so it be that they're very? Say? It says the Slavic inscriptions are nothing but. Could it be that there are very few such pieces we found amidst the quote Russo-Arabic majority? Okay, there you go. Yes, yes. The thing is, they've all got Arabic. Now, it's not just one or two crowns of the princes. Here's the helmet, of Alexander Nevsky. Alexander Nevsky. He was um, very famous. He's still so famous throughout Eastern Europe today. This church called Alexander Nevsky, a beautiful one in Bulgaria. Have a look at his helmet. You can clearly see Arabic on them. So we got these problems, and uh, nobody seems to be talking about it. Yeah, all these swords, and uh, it's like when people walk into the Kremlin museums and all these things, they won't realize it. You've got to have a look very carefully. Like, for example, you'll see all these things, and you'll think medieval knights in shining armor. Yeah, but nobody would ever imagine Oh my God, they've got Arabic on them. Nobody S seems to think these things. So we got a problem. Where does Russia fit in this history? Okay, never mind the Russian kings. What about the kings of the Holy Roman Emperor? They've got Arabic writing on. What well, about their coins? They're Yes. I was going to say, it's interesting also because we were looking at the idea that the Holy Roman Empire is inspired by this Christianity out of a Jewish mystic from Jerusalem. And Moscow Moscow has this whole story about being one of the 13 tribes going through the Ukraine from Jerusalem. But you're even saying that the Israelis, or the Hebrews rather, they're speaking Arabic. So what's the truth about Jerusalem? Like, where What are they speaking? And what's what leads to this? Okay. So now you're going to a totally different subject. It's too deep. Okay. You've mentioned, yes. You've mentioned Jerusalem. Let's make this really interesting. Yes. I hope so. Let's make this really <laughs> interesting. So now the thing is, it is well known that let's start with the biggest city 
in Europe. It's called Istanbul. It was the, Istanbul was the biggest city in the world for right. the last 2,000 years. New York beat it a few times, but generally in the last 2,000 years, Istanbul has been the biggest city and in it Europe. It was Constantinople. Mehmed II considered himself the oh, yeah. Caesar. Oh yeah, when you say Constantinople. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I will give you an example now. What do you call it? Yes, I'll give you an, an example. And it's a port. Most people, yeah, yeah, most people call it Russia. <laughs> and a few people in the past called it Soviet Union, but hardly anybody actually said the full words, Union of the Soviet Socialist Republics of Russia. Or, yes? I mean, about, so about, anybody... about Istanbul? Isn't Istanbul Turkey? So was it part of... About, about the Soviet Union. Oh, I see. So, yeah, so what I'm trying to say... Is that first uh, let's go to Istanbul and this information is really important let me where is it going to be Bosphorus. now the thing is the thing is many people won't believe it but in Istanbul the major language there was Arabic until the 20th century let not turn this into me. <laughs> yeah, yeah which is surprising I couldn't believe this myself yeah well, I guess the Ottomans would have probably wanted Turkish to be suppressed as they could speak Arabic. I, I could see that being logical. That makes sense. Wait, it, it's, when you say suppressed, if there we are need Turks, we, yeah, okay, fair we, enough. We need evidence that the Turkish language existed at that time. Same, wow. Many people. Is can you imagine? You can say to me, what do you call it? That the Vatican probably wanted Latin, I, Italian, to be suppressed because they wanted they wanted the Latin language. Turkish but is an no language. Reason. There's nothing like it. It's just a strange, different language. We did a map. We did a map at one point and showed that Istanbul would have been the perfect place to go through if you were going in between like you from ukraine crimea or from africa from the, the horn yeah. it's yeah. all through yes. Istanbul. yeah as you've noticed um, andreas i'm somebody i don't like to guess things or base anything or have any judgments on to think on let, intuition without on data theory. right yes because if we have theories we are never going to know the truth why we are alive why we die or what's going on yeah, well, and just sort of obje risks. objectively, geographically, there's a nexus point in Istanbul because you can yeah. take a boat from Istanbul to north or south very far. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, you asked me about the Turkish language, and that's why I said, hey, we will not guess if the Ottomans suppressed the Turkish language. Yes. Now, I've sent you information that you can check. This is from Pen. I think it's from Pennsylvania, one of the universities there. The Ottoman Turkish language. Yes, words, basically it was 80% Persian and Arabic. Now, when somebody says Persian, the Persian language, yes, before the year 1900 was 80% Arabic anyway, yes? And the Turkish language was 80% Arabic and Persian. So basically it was Arabic and they were using Arabic letters. So now the thing is, mysteriously, they changed this. Yes, they changed the Turkish language, they changed the Arabic language in Turkey and uh, they removed it in the 20th century. But the thing is, let's focus on the facts that the language was basically Arabic. Yes, in Turkey. So now in Istanbul. So it's not about, it does say people can go and check it more, but the language was Arabic. Now, when I say Arabic, yes, I'll give you an example. When you say Snoop Dogg speaks English, yeah, he's got his own type of language, rap language. Oh, in Texas, they speak English. Yes, that's English. Oh, they speak English in Australia. Yes, that's English, but um, it's their dialect, their pronunciation, etc. Somebody else could say it's a totally different language. Yes, but it's actually English. So now the thing is, it was Turkish Arabic, like you could say there was Judeo Arabic. You could say there's Moroccan Arabic, Egyptian Arabic. Yes, yeah, those are going into the minor details. Yeah. This thing is so exciting because the thing is, Jesus Christ, where did he live? Yes? Right. Now the thing is, where did he live? Because this is going to shock you too. Yes, because you could, especially in the Balkans, because the Balkans, Yugoslavia, what it, one thing that survived in Yugoslavia, especially in Serbia and many other places, many people still remember Jerusalem of Jesus Christ. And they say something about this city that, uh, that you will find strange. Now, I'm going to show you this. So now in Istanbul, the language is, was Arabic. Yes, the coins in Europe are basically Arabic. Yes. So now in um, Istanbul, let's have a look at this and uh, you can read this out and uh, you will find this very strange. You could just do a simple search in Yahoo and uh, let me just show you this. That during the Middle Ages, yes, here, there is New York City in America, yes. Will you call New York City the second New York or are you going to call it the Western New York? No, 
It's in the West, but it's New York. There is a York in England, but you're not going to call it the second. Yes? Yes? <laughs> York 2.0. So historians will try and confuse you. But check this out. I've sent you a link. You can read this about Jerusalem. Pilgrimage Where was in the Jer Byzantine the Empire. Jerusalem of Jesus Christ? Constantinople, known as the New Jerusalem. St. Simeon, the stylite. Jerusalem, namely Constantinople. The biblical Jerusalem is identified with medieval Constantinople. Constantinople, Jerusalem, the expected place of the second coming. Okay. Expected? Yes. And what were people doing at that time? This is exactly how it was described by medieval pilgrims that were journeying pilgrimage. to Pilgrimage. People are going there right. because this is the place where Jesus Christ, they're expecting him to come here. Oh, their own Mecca yes. in Turkey. All right. And wait, how long is the Middle Ages? 1,000 years. Wait a minute. They're waiting for Jesus Christ to come to Istanbul. And Istanbul was known as Jerusalem. It was never called Constantinople. That's a scam as well. You'll huh. soon find out. Yes. So now we've got a problem. But this is why, yes, people are sat there. They're believing these Greek gospels. Jesus Christ didn't speak Greek. Yeah. Jesus Christ must have spoken the language that all these people were speaking. And they were speaking Arabic. And Istanbul, this is why it was important that I showed you. Istanbul, the language was Arabic. And Jesus Christ, if he and if people were going through during the Middle Ages, it sounds crazy at first. Yes, during the Middle Ages for a thousand years, Istanbul to the people of Europe was called Jerusalem. I've sent you from Yahoo search. Have you found it? Constantinople. Right. History Constantinople what, what was perceived as a holy city, the second Jerusalem. Though it keeps saying second, like New York, you're saying the expected place of the second coming. This is exactly how it was described by the medieval pilgrims who moved in the city from one shrine to another as in a spatial icon whose sacred meaning was much more important than its architectural and archaeological realities. Okay, so then if they're saying the second coming is happening here and this is the new Jerusalem, are they saying that there's an older Jerusalem somewhere well, else no, and why are they not there? Histori historians just saying new. So it's, historians are going to say, ah, oh, Jesus Christ spoke Hebrew or Aramaic. Yeah, when historians say something, normally you find it to be a lie. So now we've got a serious problem. Yes, we've got a serious problem. Istanbul was called Jerusalem for a thousand years. That even people, because in the Balkans, they weren't as modernized as Western Europe yeah, for the last hundred years. So many people in the Balkans still remember this. Yes, we've got this problem. Many people, and not only that, what's even worse, yes, what's even worse about this Jerusalem thing, let me just show you. You will find this very strange. Yes, yes, the Crusades happened 1,000 years after Jesus Christ died. Yes, can you imagine that, imagine 1,000 years after Adolf Hitler is dead, people start the Second World War 1,000 years later. That would sound stupid. So now Jesus Christ has just died, and 1,000 years later, the people start Crusades. And they're all going to Jerusalem to go to the Crusades. But the thing is, because the church wrote the history, we can find many lies. But in some of the documents, we found out that these Crusades, especially the fourth one, went to Jerusalem, and Jerusalem was Constantinople. Have you received the new page that I've sent you? Yeah, fourth crusade. 12, yes. Uh, 1095 to 1216. Wow. The target ended up being in Jerusalem, in Constantinople. Have you seen it? Yeah. Yeah, yes, most, and I'm why also was seeing, it 1,000 years? I'm seeing... Why on, was it uh, 1,000... Uh, yeah. Sorry, I was going to say, I was seeing like Kaora is also confirming the number of people saying yes, that they were modeling themselves on being Jerusalem. Some people called themselves Jerusalemites entirely. This idea the new Jerusalem targeted Constantinople. This is all, yeah, the war, this is the now, religious war between Christian Muslims. Nobody called it New Jerusalem. Nobody called it New Jerusalem. Oh, that, that's, they're, it. They're saying, yeah, they're saying that they called themselves Jerusalemites. So they wouldn't yeah, call themselves no, Nova an Jerusalem. Imagine right now, yes, uh, if you went to if you went to Turkey, the Turkish people today in Constantinople or Istanbul, they don't call it America. They say Amerika. The Americans don't call it Amerika. The Americans call it America. Yes. So the people of Europe, the Germans, the French, the Russians, they didn't call it the New or Second Jerusalem. Right. Yes. They called it Jerusalem. They Just said straight. this is the city. That Jesus Christ lived, he died, and he's coming back here. This is Jerusalem to them. Wow. You understand? Yeah. Now, historians can turn around and say, this is the old one, this is the new one. I don't care what historians say. Yeah? It's the historians 1,000 years later are going to say this, yes? What, why should we care what a historian's going to say? We should care what the people said. Right. This is yeah? what they it's believe like then. Can, 
Yeah, historians can turn around and call it Amrika in Turkey. But the people called it inside America, they call it America. Yes? You understand? Yeah. yeah. In uh, Mexico, they call it Estados Unidos. <laughs> historians, 1,000 years later, can, can say what they want. I don't care what Mexican historians say. and say, Estados Unidos. You understand? It's because the people in America called it America. Yes. So now the people of Europe, they called it Jerusalem. Yes, this was Jerusalem. They're going. Get, they're even going to crusades to go and fight there. Yes. So now this is even worse. They're going to go to crusades and they're burning this city down. And when they go on crusades, do you know what they were doing on these crusades? Burning books. <laughs> I wonder. They were burning Bibles. Yeah. Okay. And they went one thousand years later. Do you know what's so strange? People can check out the history of the crusades out. What is so strange is that they were burning all these Greek gospels. Yes, they is walked into Constantinople. The, so if the, these are Germans, the English, the French, the Dutch, the Austrians, the Swiss, the Italians, they're going on the Crusades. These people, some of them Knights Templar, whoever, Teutonic Knights, whatever, they're going on Crusades. They arrive in Constantinople, the greatest Christian city in the world, the biggest city in the world. What are they doing? They're burning Bibles. Now, this is very strange, yes, that there are burning burning Bibles and burning churches, yes? Just a total cover-up, try to get rid of all the history they can and put in a new So now the history. thing is, if this is the people of Europe, they're burning Bibles, why would they burn Bibles and books? If they're trying to get yeah. rid of the history and change it with a no. new Bible. Are they trying to get rid of history or did they, why did they go burn the churches? So is the truth, they've told us that the Crusades was a war against the Muslims. What if it's the other way around? What if the Crusades was the people of Europe fighting the churches and fighting the Gospels? In the, because September the 11th was one of the biggest mm. things in the world. And half the world, more than half the world said it's a lie. Same like coronavirus was one of the biggest things in the world. And half, wow. more than half the world said this is a lie and it's a scam. But do you know what? The books, the official books, the gospel of coronavirus in 1,000 years' time is going to say there was a virus and millions and billions of people died. Yeah, The gospel of September the 11th, after 1,000 years, is going to say, yes, these airplanes hit the towers. So now, in the same way, the people didn't believe the official story, saying that Jesus Christ was crucified. They didn't believe it. They went out there to get revenge. When they, at first, they heard, I'll tell you why this story doesn't make sense. The Crusades lasted for four, five hundred years. And they're mysteriously targeting Constantinople. And Constantinople is known as Jerusalem. Yes? And Jerusalem is where the first, the original major church was. They called it Orthodox. The Vatican only became powerful after the Middle Ages, during and after. So now I've just sent it you. I've sent you a link. You could check it. That they went there, they're burning all these books, Bibles, whatever, and burning the churches down. The yeah. Knights of. Yeah. And they totally destroyed it, yes. Library and then the Crusades, of Constantinople destroyed by the Knights of the Fourth Crusade. And books now, now the Crusades mysteriously ended. Yeah, they ended around the time when a Caesar, when a new Caesar came, and this Caesar was called Sultan Mehmet, and he stormed Constantinople. Was this a crusade? Yes. Interesting. Wow. And that makes sense because we yes. didn't think, we were looking at Mehmet recently and it's it's amazing. It shows how history was – they were ignoring – Reverse. Completely ignoring his existence and it's impossible to ignore. Yeah, and do you know what the worst thing is about the invasion of these crusades? They last for 500 years. Now imagine if Jesus Christ has been crucified, yeah? And the people who killed him, they'll do a crusade. You've got your revenge. It's over. But the people of Europe are going crazy for the next four, five hundred years, and they keep on and they keep on going back. And they're telling us that these people—they're telling us the Knights Templar from northern France and from Germany. But at the same time, they're telling us these people are called Alemania or the Men of Allah, Alaman, and these people are barbarians at the same time. But they are the Knights Templar. How can they be barbarians who were burning the churches? Yeah, if you study the Aleman. They'll turn around and say, these people were killing uh, churches, etc. Wow. Alemans. And then they're called Alemans. These are the Germans. And yeah. those were uh, Ale. Yeah. Uh, and uh, 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 Alaman. And uh, Allah, it means all or everything. It's got the exact meaning in Arabic. God. All or everything. All encompassing. Alemans. 
Well, Ali is also the son-in-law and companion of the Prophet Not Muhammad, Ali, right? Allah. Allah well, man. The Allah man, yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to send it to you. No, for yeah. sure. And no, it, it's especially in, in Spanish and everything. It's That's still how they're yeah. referred to as the yeah, Allah man. The strange thing is, why were they called this name? Yes. Either because of Allah yeah. or because of Ali, the cousin of Muhammad. One or the other. <laughs> Oh, the word Ali is the name of a person. We're talking about a tribe or a group of people. It's a, it's a, now the thing is, the, Al, the Aleman or the Alaman, they were going around burning churches. Yes? So this is strange. Yeah, yeah and they were fighting um, these churches. So it just doesn't make sense. They were fighting the, the Roman Empire when the Roman Empire was Christian Roman. So it just doesn't make sense unless if we put two and two together of the Crusades. And the Crusader Knights had this cross on. Yes, and the thing is, now that I've mentioned Istanbul, we could get diverted saying, oh, Allah probably means Ali. Or the the only... reason I think it's interesting is because when we think of Muhammad, there's a very big difference between his rule and his cousins. When Ali comes in, Shia and Shar Sharia Shia Islam still kind of consider the authoritarianism yeah. from Ali. Yeah. So it makes sense uh, if now, there was an authoritarian split. Now, now the thing is, uh, and we won't focus on, we won't focus on, what do you call it? Yes, Jerusalem and Constantinople. We should get um, back. The thing you're is, right. if you're going to talk about Ali and Sharia law, it's fascinating it's like, um, though what you're saying you know, about Alamon because yeah, nobody says that. That's why I've given you another link so that people will know that they're going in into the totally wrong path. Like for example, Judaism has got Shahita law, or instead of Sharia, it's a similar word. Hebrew came from Arabic, not the other way around, and it's to do with um, the laws for eating and food and how to slaughter animals. Yeah, wow. so it's going to go a bit too far, and then talking about people's cousins and whatever Tan Mehmet or the Prophet Muhammad how many Muhammads let's focus yeah, on well, Jerusalem another day. Oh, well. now let me send you let me send you what people don't notice is this now up to about if we look at medieval yeah medieval or renaissance is the end of the medieval renaissance crucifixion paintings yeah there's paintings inside churches on their walls and things like that throughout Europe yes hmm. yeah so now the thing is, you'll find hundreds of paintings throughout Europe, yes, of the crucifixion. Yes, the, the crucifixion paintings. Um, right, the three, the three crucifixes in, in the uh, large People could do a Google search. Have you received that Google search? Uh, I just see the sh Shishita part still. I haven't got anything past that. Oh, wait, here's, no, no. it's coming Let's up now. Let's not get distracted. To it. It's coming up now. Yeah, so the thousands of pictures of the yes. Muhammad so now, um, Allah here name. Here is an example. Here is an example. These are. This is an example of a Renaissance painting of the crucifixion by Antonello de Messina. Yes. And what do you see in the background? Look carefully at that picture. You will see the two waterways. What the first waterway is the Golden Horn in hmm. Istanbul with the with the walls near the Golden Horn, and beyond that is the Bosphorus. There it is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes, and that's what you will see in half the paintings of these famous paintings and they're not in one place because people went let's can you imagine right now in America many people yes they've been to New York they've been from Los Angeles to New York then they go back home holiday they've been from Seattle to New York then they go back home they've been from Dallas and Houston to New York then they go back home they've been from Florida Miami Tampa and all these places to New York then they go back home they go from Chicago then they go back home yes so now, during the Middle Ages, everywhere in Europe, from France, from Germany, from Spain, from Italy, everywhere, people were going to Constantinople, Jerusalem. They were going there because they went there because they were waiting for Jesus Christ to come back. He's going to come to this city. Yes, and then um, the crucifixion happened in, in Jerusalem. So now let's look at all these paintings and let's see what Jerusalem actually looks like. And what do we see? Now, here the is... The um, And we could talk about Sharia law or Shahita law. But yeah, this is yeah, big. Yes, in Judaism. Or let's get to the exciting things. Yeah. yeah. Because you asked about Constantinople. I'm sending you many paintings so that you can go through them. Here is a painting um, by Gerard da David. And this one's from Holland. Wow. You're in the around the 15th that's century. Definitely. You know if the Bosphorus is at you know, Jerusalem, that's crazy. The now, Bosphorus now here, Jerusalem. Do you know what you could see there? What you can see in that painting, you can actually see, yes, from the 14th, 15th, 16th century, you can actually see the Hagia Sophia, 
which is a bit darker in color. And you can see the Sultan Ahmed mosque. I sent you a new mm -hmm. picture. Have a look at the new one, the Sultan Ahmed, that looks white and brand new. Right. And you can actually see Galata Tower and Galata Tower oh. for the Galatians. Wow. Have you received the new yeah, picture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just looking at the Galata Tower the other day because it has that rotary. It's amazing. That's exactly, and it's in the crucifixion picture. There's no question. That's it. Jerusalem and Turkey. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, let me send you many paintings. There's hundreds. Uh, there's so many that oh, um, wow. actually it's almost like you can't deny it. It's, it's so worrying. It's like it's worrying. Now, here is a picture from Belgium. Let's go from, I've shown you Italy, I've shown you Holland. Now, in case somebody says, hey, people made a mistake, they guessed. Yeah. Now, here is a picture from Belgium by Jules van Cleef. This is a 15th century Renaissance. And look carefully at this painting and what do you see? You will see a waterway the and wall, you will see the yeah. defenses of the walls of Jerusalem. The Moorish style, And yeah. do you know when you look at the walls of Jerusalem, let's compare it to modern Istanbul mm -hmm. and let's see is there any historical artifacts there and what do you see in the next picture? Yep, there's the, the same Moorish style, the ascending wall, the same kind of uh, octagonal it's exactly, castles. It's basically exactly the same because the wall today is damaged. Right, yes? there you go. Yes, yeah, it. so it's an exact match with the waterway, the, the waterway that's going through the Bosphorus. Yes, and so it's an exact match. At the Rumeli Hisari. And Jerusalem is not, yes, and Jerusalem it, it, it is not beside the sea or the two waterways. I could dismiss this if it weren't for the fact that if this was just people in Turkey drawing pictures of Jesus and so they use their own surrounding, but this isn't that. They're all over Europe. These are people They're all over Europe. Places. This is everywhere. This is not, crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah so, so that's the problem. So now um, <laughs> Professor Anatoly, uh, yeah, Anatoly Fomenko pointed this out. Yeah, now here is another painting I've just shown you, and you can have a look through this. Oh, um, man, yeah. Th this is from the 15th century, and uh, you can actually see the ships going right. through in the Bosphorus. I've sent you an yeah. enlargement. <laughs> yeah, this is by Andrea Solario, not Andreas, Andrea Solario, and they say it's about 15... All three, something around then. So the, this is so what I wanted. This is what I wanted to see. I wanted to see. I was saying, hey, Turkey, there's this crossing. You found the Bosphorus behind Christ with with actual ships going by it. David, and this it's is not just must. one waterway. The Bosphorus <laughs> has two waterways, Golden Horn. And right. you can actually find two. I've just sent you another painting. And this one is by Tro Peregrino. These are all in different places. Jeez. And you can actually see big ships. Yeah, these are, and these the are Bosphorus. ship of the line style ships too, which tells you what time yes. period they're saying. This is clearly around. Yes. So, yeah. so as you can see, we've got a serious problem. Yes, we've yeah. got a serious problem This is now. Jesus Christ yes. in Turkey a thousand years ago, not 2000. Yes, and now the thing is in Istanbul, yes, so all we can find in... I can send you hundreds of paintings. Let me just send you many so that I, you can upload them on the video. So and, uh, is this kind of like the Book of Mormon? Are they saying, hey, let's modernize it? Like, he's with us now. How will we know this is... How come everyone's saying it, though? I don't know. This is a lot. This is a lot to digest. But now we've got a problem. Yes, we found that the language and the coins and things like that oh are God. Arabic. Even you just sent me. Istanbul. You just sent and me like a hundred pictures the of the turkey with Christ in front of it. This is crazy. I'm going. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah, and you can just see the Bosphorus. It is it, is totally insane. What is happening? Yes. Yes, I really don't know what to say. Is you, you can say it. Jesus is from Turkey. Jesus is from Istanbul. That's pretty clear. That's what we're um, looking at. Or at least they crucified him. Was from there, they but crucified him there. It looks, like, there. It looks um, like he's crucified now the there. Now yeah. he went there. And now another strange thing is people don't check what the word Jerusalem means. Jerusalem in modern Hebrew, people, how you want to pronounce it, because they created the pronunciation only recently is Jerusalem. In Arabic, it's, it's Zarusalam. Now that's two words, Zar. Usalam. So many people are saying Jerusalem is in Utah, Jerusalem is in Scotland, Jerusalem is in Germany, Jerusalem is in Barcelona, Jerusalem is in India. Now what, Now we've got a problem. All these people who are saying Jerusalem is in Scotland, Edinburgh, okay, let's see what they're going to say. The word Jerusalem is two words. It means the word Jer or da, jer, Dar, means city in Hebrew, Aramaic or Arabic. Choose whichever one you want. Yeah, the first word means city, dark, and the next word means peace. Salam. Usalam. Not salam or shalom, usalam. Ah. It's two words, dar and usalam. And now we have a religion today in the world that's mysteriously called usalam or islam. So was Islam created by the Prophet Muhammad 
or was it created from before? Because this is what the Muslims say. They say the Prophet Muhammad was the final leader of Islam. Maybe in the Middle East they say Islam today, but in these dialects they said it was called Islam. So now people are saying Edinburgh was the city of Jerusalem or Jerusalem. So they're saying it was the city of Usalam. If it was the city of Usalam, okay now, all you people who are saying hey, these things and then you found all these Arabic coins all over Europe, what, what do you have to say now? Yeah, these Muslims have been saying for centuries, have been saying, hey, Islam is older than the Prophet religion, uh, Muhammad and it was the religion of Jesus Christ. And this is why many people said their city was called the city of Usalam. Because Uslam or Islam was the system. Yes. Uslam. That's the new thing. Yes. It's the old thing. Jerusalem. Yes, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. It's yes. The, it, the, it, um, it means city of peace. So Islam means the religion of peace. Uslam, Islam. So now we've got these problems, and we've got these problems. Jesus Christ. What language did he speak? All the Jewish people have been speaking Arabic for centuries. We can't even find a Hebrew language. Nobody even spoke it. Then they burnt all the Jewish people's Arabic books that Jesus Christ left behind. And then, hey, people are going on crusades. They're burning all these gospels in Istanbul or Const in Constantinople. They're burning all these books over there. And Jesus Christ was crucified there. Or well, if Jesus Christ was crucified in Constantinople, it means the priests who killed him, because the, the history says that the people who were the priests Okay, they call them Pharisees, Sadducees, blah, blah, blah. They turn around and say that the priests, yes, killed Jesus Christ. Yes, they sentenced him to death. Yes, this is what it says in the Bible. So now, let me send you this information because this information is totally shocking. Because many people don't seem to think for a few minutes. Yeah, now even in the New Testament, even with all its modifications, yeah, it turns around and says that Jesus Christ, was sent before the basically the parliament, the Pharisees, and he was sent before the San, Sanhedrin. This is where the high priest is, and this is where they've got the Pharisees. The Pharisees are the priests and the scribes and the people who are the writers. Yes, and then it says that the Sadducees are there, and they're the rich guys, all the families of the priests, etc., and everything, the businessmen. Yes, yes, so Jesus Christ was sent before the ruling people of Jerusalem. Or the ruling people of Constantinople. Yes? Have you got that? So what do the Pharisees yeah. mean? Yeah, I'm seeing this. So it says the Pharisees were the forerunners of yeah, the it's rabbis. Yeah, same like okay. saying today, uh, I could say, hey, it's the Democrats and the Republicans and the House of Congress, etc. Okay, so the Sadducees yeah, were the, they were a powerful group. Okay. Yeah, the, the, it's the ruling government governing body of Jerusalem, of Istanbul. So now it's basically these people, the priests and the ruling families. Gotcha. <laughs> and the people in power. Because to be a priest, your father the, would have to have been a priest. And to be a high Sadducee, yes. your father so would have to be a high Sadducee. Yes, okay. it's the people in power Got in it. Constantinople. Okay. So now you can see why the Crusades went to Constantinople. And it wasn't just the, the priests, it was the scribes, the people who were writing these religious books. They sentenced Jesus Christ to death and they said, Jesus Christ must die. And then they announced these priests, yeah, as I've sent you photographs, in Constantinople, it was the Orthodox Church, the priests, etc. They announced, we've killed Jesus Christ. Christ is dead. You no longer will need to follow the old law of Moses. You must follow the new law, the New Testament. Now we are going to build the new world order. This was the beginning of the new world order. Do you see what this is? Now my book explains this deeper. I'm giving basic information here, the full information in my book called Jesus Christ, Skull and Bones and the Last Crusade. Yes, now some people will say, hey, I don't understand this information, it's not enough. Yeah, if you wanna say these things and if you're gonna say these comments, read everything before you comment, okay? Yes, now the thing is, what people don't know is, that let's have a look at, let's have a look at what they called Constantinople. They called Constantinople the Byzantine Empire, yes? Yeah, so what's up with that? Yes, so now we've got a problem with this. Byzantine Empire? Really? Okay, now this is, because nobody ever checks. Same like they're going to say Istanbul is the second Jerusalem or the eastern Jerusalem. Now let's look at, did the Byzantine Empire even exit? Now, you, this is very shocking, yes? Now have a look. Here, look at these historians. They can't make their mind up. 
One minute they called <laughs> Istanbul the second Jerusalem. Now they're calling it the second Rome or the East Rome. Right. I'm just sending you. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, see, you see, they'll put these things to make people ridiculous and crazy. Then they'll say this city was called Byzantium. I like this you know, one you pulled up. It says the term Byzantine was invented by German histori historian Heronius Wolf in 1557. So that's pretty... But, but, no, that, but that's now pretty when telling. Because that means Mehmet. Name, Mehmet was yeah. uh, the Caesar at this time. So maybe they're... Tr it's kind Kind of like a fake government because they're like we're ignoring the real Mehmet Caesar. Yes. So now we've got an. An. Now when people read this, they're not imagining it. Now can you imagine this now? Is who was this Hieronymus Wolf or guy? He made up the name. It's, can you imagine now? I. I can Wolf, change yeah. history books in a thousand years time. I can turn around and say, ah, oh, it was called the United the United States of China, and Washington D.C. was the capital of the United States of China. I could change the name. So he created a new name called Byzantine, yes? And nobody used that word until 200 years ago. Yeah, then it says it's Byzantine. not even popularized until the 18th century by French scholars. So, yes, yeah, whatever. and why did they do that? Yeah, why did they do that, yes? Now, this Racism. is the strange thing now. Now the thing is, yes, let's have a look at this carefully. Yes, the Renaissance mysteriously started at the same time that the Caesar called Sultan Mehmet or Mohammed, yes, or the last crusade, took over Istanbul and they got rid of the church, yes? And at that time, mysteriously, about 100 Greek manuscripts of the Bible, yes, the crusaders were burning these Greek manuscripts, yes. They're burning the churches, yes. It's because the church said Christ is dead. If they believed the, the official story, then they won't burn these gospels. They were burning these gospels because they didn't believe it. Same like the protesters, yeah, a burning September the 11th official story. We don't believe it. Same like the protesters were burning masks. They didn't believe coronavirus existed. There were so many protests. You could find all the videos on YouTube. People refusing to wear masks because they refused to believe the official story. So the truth is, for centuries, people had crusades because they came back to fight the church because they didn't believe. And the crusades mysteriously ended. When did they end? When this Caesar Mohammed Yes, invaded with the Russians and the Germans and all these other people. Ah, yes, they turned around and said, because they've changed the history and said he kidnapped children from the Balkans, from Germanic and Russians and Slavs, and he forced them into his army. Yes, but the truth is, it was actually the people fighting against the church. Now, the worst thing is, they're turning around and saying it's called Byzantium, but actually, it wasn't called Byzantium. This empire was actually called the Roman Empire. Can you imagine if I changed the name of, if I turn around and say the name of America was called China and I changed names? I can't do that. They've just changed the names. Now, the strange thing is people can check this themselves. Now, the people in power, yes, now, this is why I sent you a photograph of the Vatican and um, before. Now, the people who were the priests of the churches, yes, who claimed that they just killed Jesus Christ, yes, and they wrote these gospels, the crusaders were killing them and they were burning all these churches. Now, when they did, when Constantinople was taken by the Caesar Mohammed, yes, do you know what happened? Those people ran away with their Gospels, and they ran to Italy. Yes, and they ran to Rome around the 14th, 15th century. Refugees, okay. This is why they set up the Vatican. The history of the Orthodox Church is a lie. Are so it's the Turkish Taiwan. What is this then? So the Vatican is an escape from the power of... From Constantinople, yes. Wow. And they're pretending that we're Catholic and they were Orthodox. And that they're, they're the most important. And they're, everywhere else isn't as important as them, that they're the only ones who have the say on things. That makes a lot more sense. They're upset. <laughs> yes. So now they're upset. So what are they going to do? They're going to make plans for a new world order. Yes. And uh, so you can't understand uh, the New World Order without studying this on Muhammad, believe it or not. So now the thing is, what's even worse is, worse is so these people were, call themselves the Roman Empire. Now the strange thing is, what most people don't know is, what, what do you call it? Yes, let me send you a... The thing is, mysteriously, when these people ran away from Constantinople and they arrived in Italy, and they went to Rome, look at what they suddenly did in Rome. The Renaissance started, and look at what they teach you. I've sent you a link from Cambridge University, the first link. 
mysteriously they've rediscovered the civilization of ancient Greece and ancient Rome. Ah, uh, so they had some world fairs basically, and they're like, well, "Look at this lost culture that we need to reuse." Like, can you imagine right now? I'm going to turn around and say, "I've just rediscovered." The ancient history of the planet Pluto that's been lost for 1,000 years. The people of America, yes, they came from the planet Pluto. Can you imagine if I mysteriously start saying this? Yeah. It works maybe, at Disneyland. People, I mean... Yeah. So now the thing is, they're saying what happened is they said that the history of ancient Rome and ancient Greece was lost for 1,000 years until, Whoops. yes, these people got defeated in Constantinople, the city of Jesus Christ. And then they had to go to Rome. But I'm telling you, it sounds like such a joke. Yes. Yeah, luckily it was just buried. Right? It was just buried and it was in perfect condition. And that's how they were able to just find it. Um, what was buried? <laughs> I'm just saying, what, I mean, what, is, what is this? Yeah, this is a ridiculous narrative. Yeah, and, and as you said, they spoke Etruscan there. And Etruscan, yeah, it was actually Latin backwards. Yes. Yeah, and so and in then, other words, from then, left then, to versus right to left. Yeah, and the Etruscans like called themselves the Rashi people. Yes, and it sounded like Slavic. So now the worst thing is... Yeah, many people don't know this. Yes, let me show you now the Crusades. They tell you the story of the Crusades. They tell you where the people were fighting Arabs on camels. Yes, now let me show you this, and this is going to shock people. Let me show you this. Now this, yeah, many people don't know this because the history has been, they don't teach you this because they don't bother. Now here is a photograph of Stalingrad. I think it's World War One or Two. Yes, you'll find many of these pictures. There's hundreds of them online. Yeah, many people, this will actually shock you as well, yes? Now, because in the modern day, Europe's modern now, so people don't bother to use horses anymore. Now, here is a picture of the Battle of Stalingrad. And what do you see in this picture, Andreas? <laughs> yes, this will make you actually start laughing. What do you see? Camels in the Battle of Stalingrad. Okay. <laughs> yes, camels were common in Northern Europe, Germany, Poland, Russia. They were using them in World War II. Hundreds of them, thousands. Oh my God. Can you believe this? And so now the thing is, so these camels that they were fighting, people with camels were fighting in the Crusades, were actually Russians and Germans. Now, uh, another thing is, what they don't tell you is this. Now, this is the most scariest thing. Yes, what people don't tell you is that the Russians are using Arabic, the Germans are using Arabic, the Slavs are using Arabic. You can't even find any swords that, that even have any... Greek, Latin, or Hebrew. Now, the strange thing is, during the Crusades, the Slavs called anybody, yes, if you're from Croatia, Serbia, Slovenia, before the Catholic Church got there, the people used to call each other and they used to ask and say, are you an Arab? If you were, if you was an Arab, it meant you were a servant of God. It had nothing to do with the word race. And this is why eventually in Eastern Europe, especially the Ashkenazi and Jews, they started using the word Arabi, means the word Rabbi. The Are word meaning changed over time. I've sent you that from the Jewish Virtual Library, Israel Bible Center, and people can check it out. And anybody, you can check Slavic dictionaries. The word, the word Arabi, Rabbi, simply meant a servant of God. And they used the language Arabi, yes, on their swords in Europe, the Slavs. So we, we got these problems. So uh, so the history is not what we think it is. Yes? Wow. Is this very shocking to you now? It's a, it makes, the thing is there's so many things that tie it together, right? Like so in, in the Crusades, Scotland, when they if, were fighting the Arabs on camels, they were fighting the servants of God. The name Cam Germans and Slavs. The name Campbell in Scotland is from Camel, and in Croatia, you've got Bosnia-Herzegovina, you have Muslims, and so this actually... The weird thing is it just makes way more sense than the narrative does to explain why the world is the way it is today. So it's just it's yes. amazing. So all this information you've got, so that's why I'm sorry I, di I didn't answer several questions because I didn't want to divert. So now oh, we'll we've get got back a problem. Yeah. yeah, so now we've got a serious problem. Yes, Arabic, is, uh, Arabic was not just that. Let me show you something else what's even worse. Everybody knows th knows this. Most professors know this. That uh, you can check it out. The international language of communication, let's say between France, Germany, England, Russia, India, Egypt, Greece. The international language for a thousand years during the Middle Ages was not Latin. It was actually Arabic. I've sent you links. People can check this out. It's uh, it's known this. That Arabic was the international global language. 
Arabic was the language for the Jews for a thousand years. Can you imagine this? I think Arabic yeah. was Arabic. the international language of communication Arabic of the Middle was Ages. Arabic was the currency of Europe for a thousand years in gold and silver. We're not talking about the modern coins that we just make in machines. This is actual gold, and we're talking about millions of coins here. Arabic was on the swords of Europe. It's in the books. Yes, and the thing is, we can't find the people who spoke French, who spoke Italian. We can't even find the German language a few centuries ago. And we can't even find the he Hebrew language. Now, the worst thing is, let's say, for example, there's going to be all these people. And we're going to say, ah, we've got the Welsh language is closely related to the language of Brittany in France and of Catalonia Galatian. and the Basque province. And it's, it's got many Hebrew words and they sound similar. So I've just sent you that. This is common news that people speak about it. But right, um, let me ask you a question, Welsh yes? Hebrew. How can the Welsh language, like for example, the word good morning is in the American language, it's in the English language, it's in the Australian language, yes? So when people are saying these words are in Hebrew, and Hebrew took the words from Arabic, it means that these words are Arabic words. So now all these people who have found that the Welsh language is linked to Hebrew, or the German language is linked to Hebrew, or the English language, I've unknowingly really found that, that it's linked to Arabic. <laughs> it's actually Arabic because nobody spoke Arabic, Hebrew at all th throughout the centuries. And then we've got a problem. We can't find the people who were speaking French or German or Italian or Turkish or anything else. And then we've got a problem. Jesus Christ came here and they're trying to force it down your throat saying he spoke Hebrew. How the hell could he have spoken Hebrew when his people were speaking Arabic? And then we've got these Star of David, all these coins to, during the Middle Ages in the Star of David, yeah, and they're all in Arabic. And they're going to say, oh, they came from the desert far away. And then they're telling us, oh, Spain, half of France and uh, half of Italy were speaking Arabic during the Middle Ages. They'll say, oh, these men from the deserts of Arabia. Can you imagine them coming up today from the deserts of Arabia trying to invade Europe? get real on their camels or from the deserts of Afghanistan or Uzbekistan sending hundreds of millions of coins in gold and silver it, it, it just sounds ridiculous yes and then 80% of the coins that are found in large amounts are actually found in Europe and they're telling us it's not European it's crazy. I rest my case it's crazy I rest my case yeah now, I mean, there's now, plenty of evidence to sort of corroborate that. I was just going to say yeah, also... Two, uh, it's in my new book, The Last Crusade. And it's in my uh, other books, because The Last Crusade is actually a part of a series of books. It's in my book, Jesus Christ, and it's in um, the book, The Last Crusade. Yeah, I'll send you a links to that. But, so the thing is now, we've got these serious problems, Andreas. But the thing is, is, can you imagine? I come to the United States, and then I tell everybody, no, this was the United States of China. And then people say, hey, what about these dollars that are over here? I'll say, oh, no, they were imported from Australia. And then people, and then you say, but there was hundreds and millions of them. The majority of them were over here. I'll say, but still, they were imported. And then you say, they don't have no Chinese writing on. They've all got English writing on. I'll say, no, the people spoke Chinese in the United States of China. You'll know I'm lying. The evidence is there. And then imagine, imagine you say, we found all these. These guns, the Americans, the American army went to Vietnam, they went to Iraq, it's got English writing on. I say, it was decoration. Oh, they, they borrowed the guns. They borrowed the guns. Yes, it was the United States of China. And then you say, and then you say, oh, what about this, these older, older presidents? Donald Trump, George Bush, J JFK. Yeah, we've just found them paintings and everything he's got English writing on. I'll say, that's a mistake. And people did it for art reasons, blah, blah, blah. And he's supposed to be Chinese. What are you going to say to me? You're going to know I'm lying. Shall I show you what official historians say? Why there is Arabic on Old Testament characters before the church leaders came from Constantinople. Read this, what official historians say in the Wikipedia. They turn around and say, they turn around and say that these painters and people, they wanted to express cultural di universal universality in the Middle Ages. At the time, the people were doing crusades saying, hey, we've just found an Arab, kill him. Convert right now or you're going to die. And they're telling us, oh, these people did this for cultural universality or diversity. Can you believe <laughs> this? <laughs> oh, if the coins are here, oh, the people didn't know. Let me show you what they said about in England that they found Arabic coins. You're going to think this is, it sounds like a joke. 
There's a lot of Americans with Japanese tattoos. I wouldn't be surprised if some Italians liked Arabic. But no, this would be Uh, kind of weird if it's the only language, right? It's the only language they have in their painting. Yeah. Well, we are going to find Japanese money in America. We are going to find Chinese money in America. But the majority, we're going to find the dollars. Yes. So now the thing is, have a look at this. Here is from England, a coin. It's got Arabic on it. And do you know what? Do you know what? Oh, King Oba. Yeah. Do you know what uh, the museums say and historians? You're going to find this so shocking. I think it says the same thing, what it says in every European country. Yeah, the same thing what it says on the Russian coins. Look at Russia, the other side of Europe. It says La Laha Illa Muhammad. No, La Laha Illa. There is only one God. Now the, there is no God but Allah. Now the thing is, if you go to official historians, they'll say eh, it is, it's a mistake, and they made the mistakes because the Arabic is upside down compared to the Latin on the other side. They're telling us that ancient Rome and Latin was missing for a thousand years until the 16th century. And then they're telling us that even in Italy, the people didn't even know how to speak Italian. And then the Italians were writing the writing backwards, which is exactly the same like Arabic. Arabic is actually, realistically, it's Latin backwards. Most people, anybody who investigates it will actually find that. And then they're telling us this and that, saying um, it's a mistake, the people didn't know, oh, it's just decoration. Oh, but these people, they hated Islam so much. They hated Arabic so much. They hated these people. Muslims are um, the terrorists, man. The killers. They were killing the people on pilgrims. We're not going to have anything to do with them. Oh, let's put it on paintings. Oh, (laughs) this Arabic, let's put it on our swords. (laughs) Oh, let's put, there is no God but Allah on the coins. Let's put it on the emperors, princes on their crowns. Oh, let's put it on the gowns and the clothes of the Germanic emperors, etc. There's a lot of crescent moons and stars on symbols in Ireland, I'm finding as well. There's definitely some connections yes, there. Yes, so the thing is, many people have realized that World War One and Two and many of these other wars were actually created to actually destroy the evidence. Yes. <laughs> and the Civil War, yeah, that was created to destroy the evidence in the United States. I rest my case, sir. Yes, sir. My God. I rest my case. My I'm God, sure David. you've got enough there. We're gonna have to, to we're gonna about. have to digest this. It's gonna take a minute to just go through this, and I can't even believe the data that we're just a whirlwind. Yeah, today. even do you think it's easy for me? I have to <laughs> live knowing all these things. Yeah, it's not easy for me. Now I know that somebody is gonna say, "Hey, this isn't enough. One painting, two painting, one masterpiece." Okay, if they're lazy, go out there and check it yourself, Buster. Or the information's in my books, or if not in mine, in the books of the. Professor Anatoly Fomenko. He's even pointed these things out, and many other researchers have. Yeah, please don't make a judgment halfway. Yes, study it all, and then you'll find the same history. Instead they're telling us these bishops of France, etc., they mysteriously had Arabic on. Oh, the, oh, the Bible was in Hebrew. Really? Yeah, but we burnt, burnt all the Jewish Bibles. Yeah, we burnt them in inquisitions for a few hundred years. But well, Hebrew is the original language. Really? How many Jews spoke Hebrew? Nobody until the 20th century. Sorry. (laughs) But we're telling you the Bibles were originally in Hebrew. (laughs) But nobody spoke that language. Oh, Hebrew? Uh, Sorry, all the words are Arabic, actually. Shh, don't tell anybody. We've just changed the style of the handwriting, given it a new alphabet. We've changed the pronunciation, added new words, and totally created a new language. Nobody's going to figure it out. Apart from people who study it, no one's going to know this. The world's lazy. People believed in the Gospels, they believed in the in, um, the official history of the Twin Towers. They believed coronavirus. <laughs> they, uh, yes. They be- in the same way they believe the crucifixion now. Because they're believing the official story. But then we've got the Muslims on the other side of the world and you open up their Quran. The Quran tells you all this and says, hey, go out there, you're going to find this evidence. Go out there, you'll know that they're telling lies. These people, they tell lies. And they're doing this because they've got their plans and their plots, because they want to dominate the world. And if you look at it, you'll find that the New World Order, all the contracts were signed. Let me show you Let me show you this before we go, because it's shocking that around the time that these official Greek New Testaments came out, yeah, they made all these contracts, yes, and they made all these contracts to divide the world, to form the New World Order, the New Testament, blah, 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 yes. And the thing is, wherever the church went, yeah, the church had its slavery, 
blah, blah, blah. And many people don't know, after this Sultan Mehmet, what he did after he invaded Istanbul, there were big revolutions throughout Europe. Like 1683 invasion, yes, the Vatican was turning around and saying that people were dying from plagues, blah, blah, blah. But here it is, then people can check it out. That around the time when this Caesar Maha Mohammed, yes, took over, they made plans for the New World Order. And the New World Order was done especially after the invasion of Istanbul. And King Ferdinand and Queen Isabel's request for the New World Order, the, the old o World Order gave way to a New World Order. Okay, so this is the old. Yeah. New but when world they order. say gave way, let me show you another thing. You can actually find documents from three, four hundred years ago of the Vatican and the ruling people in, that came to Western Europe. And some of them were in Western Europe already, that they ran away, that they made plans to divide the world between them. Yes, colonial empires. Wait, let me just find it. <clears throat> yes, to make the New World Empire and how they made nation states. But all this information is in my books anyway. So they made these plans to divide the world between them. Um, let me see, where is it? Ah, yes, I found it. You can, Wikipedia, just type in colonial empire, read through it. And they started making their agreements immediately after the fall of Constantinople. They say it was 1453, it took them another 25 years to settle down in Italy, to conquer Rome, get rid of the Etruscans, blah, blah, blah. Then they were making contracts. And they say this was competition with the Muslims. No, it wasn't competition. Yeah, it wasn't even Muslims. Because when you look at some of these paintings of the invasion of Constantinople, the Knights Templar with their crosses, and other people, and Russians, and Germans, and Poles, yes, that they were in Caesar Mohammed's army, yes, and they were called Romans, yeah, they weren't called Byzantines, so these people ran away to Rome, and then they pretended and said, we're the original Romans, we are ancient Rome, then they created the fake history of ancient Rome, that's another long story, ancient Rome didn't exist, half these buildings they made them themselves and forged the coins, Hard to believe. So they made these contracts, and then they went round with the Bible, the Vatican, and the French armies, the British armies. They went round with Christianity. It doesn't matter if they were Protestant, Catholic, whatever, Orthodox. This is what they did. They went out there, and they took the New Testament to build the new world order or the new system. And the old, and when they did that, mysteriously, Europe became 90% a land of serfs, peasants, and slaves. Yes, and they're telling us the beautiful history of Christianity. Yes, the beautiful history of Christianity. Let me just show you the beautiful history of Christianity is this. That it's actually shocking. Yes, let me show you that I'm in Europe. Yes, that during the medieval and renaissance times, everywhere where the church ruled, it doesn't matter if the church is Protestant or Catholic or whatever, 80 to 90% of the people were serfs or slaves. Simple. Yeah. And they're telling us this is the beautiful culture of Christianity and the church. Look at what the church did. This is why people joined the Caesar called Sultan Muhammad. Yes, and after he did that, it was a revolution. And the church lost its capital. Constantinople was the greatest city of the world. It was Jerusalem, the city of Jesus Christ. So when they lost that city, they had to run to a small village. Rome only had in the 15th century, yes, Rome's population was only about a village of 10,000 people. Yes, in the countryside, yeah. And they went there and they had to start again. Too damn they were angry. They must have been so angry. Yes, that's why the Inquisitions happened, yeah. blah, 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 everything. And they were burning all the books. They created these new languages, ancient Greece, ancient Rome, ancient Hebrew, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Wow. Let's leave it at that, Andreas, and the rest is in my box. <laughs> so this is we're I think we're on the precipice of some major thing here because we're getting to the point where we see how the collapse of Tartaria and the revision of history and whatever the cultures yes. are created now, Tartaria, from all happening now. A, yeah, Tartaria. The word Tat just means father. Tartaria means fatherland. So some people call it Tartaria, some people call it Kingdom of God, the 1,000 years of the Middle Ages, or some people call it the Kingdom of Israel, King David, King Solomon. Yeah, they've got a uh, Maori coins. It's all come. Too. It's all coming around uh, the Crusades. It seems like the Crusades. And then this is also the for Crusades, next time. The Crusades. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 everyone says it was the Church fighting against. It's the, the worldwide civil war. It sounds like if you have people it rising. Was the other way round. It's right. the people who were fighting the people in power. Yeah. Because they had enough of the lies, the crucifixions, wow. the fiction, a fictional story, forcing everybody to be a slave. Yeah, they made uh, 80, 90 percent of the people were peasants. Dogs, 
yeah, you can't go anywhere, you can't do anything, you're a slave. And then mysteriously, after the Turks, yes, invaded Europe, they took over. When they say Turks, it wasn't just Turks. It was the people of Europe joined them. And that's why the invasions of Vienna happened and other things. They got rid of these people. Then when these people got rid of, they started, uh, they've started a new plan. And now, they've still not taken control. They want control again like last time, a new world order. And when the people were going to Constantinople, they were going from church to church. It was like Disneyland. They were paying for tickets to heaven. This is what the church was doing. You can, and uh, it was actually church law. You cannot go to heaven without... Yes, this is the sort of garbage they made up. Whereas the Quran itself says that anybody who does good things, good things is going to get their reward with God. And they've got nothing to fear when they die. Anyone who does good things. Now it does say in the Quran that if you do bad things and you reject the truth when you find it, yes, yeah, and you're going to follow lies, yeah, then obviously if you're a liar and a cheater and you're uh, oppressing people, then God could turn things. you into a gorilla or a pig. I remember is one of the things that the Quran says. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yes, that story has been reversed. Don't forget, we're living in the modern world today. They're telling you, Andreas, that your great granddaddy was a, a monkey and he turned into a man. Yeah, what type of a monkey Fair. was your granddad, um, Andreas? My granddad wasn't a monkey. I don't believe these people, They're these historians and scientists. Right. If you believe them, then um, you yeah, have to right. ask yourself what type of a monkey your granddad was. <laughs> and obviously, if you don't believe them, then your great-grandfather was a gentleman. Yeah, yes. or at least a bonobo. Okay, we. But next time we're gonna have to cover. We're gonna cover all this. We're talking oh, about the Crusades. Subjects. Yeah, that's fine. And, and we'll I get into apologize. the Alawites. I, it's okay. I just I want to because the Alawites seem interesting. We're talking about the Alamans and this idea of the more militant version of Islam that becomes Islam. Now we're getting into this idea of what happened to Islam. Why is there a violent strain? Why is the Alawite have the sword yeah, as yeah. their symbol? And that's now, all good stuff to people, find out. The violent people in Islam they call jihadis. And this is why they made the drama or the comics and the movies called Star Wars, The Knights of Jedi. They were good people that became bad. Because that's why, um, if you go and check these, all these guns in the Middle East of these Muslim crazy guys, um, they get their guns from America, they're financed by America and Russia. Everyone knows this. So they were originally good a few centuries ago. So the story of Star Wars is even based on the story. And Sith is Satan. These are long stories. Yeah. <laughs> Let's leave it at that for today. David, it's yes. amazing. Thanks so much for being Spoken. here. Hey, everybody, tune in to Recent Tartarian. Recent Tartarian. Recent Tartarian.